I make a motion we accept the minutes of last week, uh, March 22nd meeting, and we also had the uh, supplemental minutes for the work session. So I make a motion we accept those two sets of minutes. Okay. Um, any comment, Lenny? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, manifest. I forgot the, the amount. If you could read that out. Forty-four thousand four hundred and ten and ninety-seven cents. Ninety-seven cents. Okay. I make a motion to accept the manifest of uh, forty-four thousand four hundred ten dollars and ninety-seven cents. <coughs> second. Yeah. second. Uh, any comments? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. And now we go to public comment. And as has been said in the past, uh, if you need to discuss either a uh, employee of the town or a vendor that works for the town, please submit it in writing. Selectmen will deal with it. Um, and other than that, keep it polite and try to limit your comments to like three to five minutes. Thank you very much. That's individually. So public comment. Mr. Murphy, uh, please state your name. Mr. Murphy, Green Mountain Road. Uh, this is a, I'd like to follow up on um, two weeks ago, Selectman Edwards suggested we change the locks on the office in here. Yeah. And also to Im improve a little bit on our security and the way things, the uh, door, open door policy in there, swinging widely. Well, I'd like to comment that coming in here last week, I see nothing, nothing's changed. Uh, just curious if we're going to try to secure this a little better, people stick to their job sites where okay. they're supposed to be. Um, I mean, this it strikes me as almost a party atmosphere when I walk in here. Okay. All right? Now, um, I'm and just going to ask on the locks. Do, do you know if that's been done? They have been changed. They have been changed, sure. All right, and uh, another question. Claudia is out. We have people filling in for her. Well, where's the... What, Pool is that drawn from? Uh, well, Cheryl, who has been working there for what? Overall, Cheryl, how long now? Almost a year. Almost, yeah, like about nine, ten months. And, and she's qualified to handle anything that <clears throat> Claudia would come across her desk. Uh, in the sense privy that to all the same information. In the sense that what might come up to the window, a question from the public, I, I was confident that she could handle right, most of it. Because it wasn't Cheryl I dealt with the other day, right. it was your wife right. who told me that she was working there. Uh, she was, as far as I know, was doing work for uh, welfare assistance and offered to stay in that office. All right, well, I just, I'm just throwing it out there yeah. that uh, I would think in the future, Claudia is unavailable to do her job, and that office should be shut down for the day. Town clerk, do her job. Claudia, do her job. I don't think we need to be just bouncing people in uh, and out of that office. Okay, I understand that, but I, I will say that the person that was manning that office does have close to a year experience handling the window, so I don't feel uncomfortable about that. <coughs> uh, this was discussed as a, that there's a lot of information in that office, there's public information, there's private information. Yeah. This should be a secure office. People should, one person should be in charge of one particular section in office, mind of their business. It's just my, my opinion. Oh, yeah, and overall, it would be nice if we could 
segregate that much, but there is a lot of sort of task swapping that happens within the office because. Yes, I, I, I see that there's also a lot of delegating authority to, in creation of positions within town um, that, you know, well, let's take, for instance, a town welfare officer. Yeah. Traditionally, the job of the selectman. Uh, back when it was a very simple job, yes. And why has it become such an overwhelming job where a town of, I don't know, however many people, less because, than 2,000 uh, people? So it was overwhelming. Really? Is it overwhelming? Are they, uh, do we need a, is that a paid position? Can yes. I ask that question? Yeah. That's a paid position? Mm -hmm. Yes. How many families a, a month do we deal with? Could, could you answer me that question? Um, I can't give it to you offhand, but. We uh, have local food pantries available for, for that need. Um, yeah. Is the town. Yeah, overall, overall, when I look at Effingham in the sense of the municipal responsibility, I look at what Effingham spends as a portion of its budget on its welfare administration and delivering welfare services, right? We come in at the very low end of the spectrum on that. We're doing a very economical job in relation to any other town, or, or as well as any other town. Or economical, go Henry, in the sense that we're, we're providing that at an economical rate or we're, we're keeping our... We're not giving out much. Because it, why have we created a position if, if it's something Go, simple that can be handled by the select? Because, be, because it's not simple. Can it, I speak Tim, to that? It, uh, yeah. One second, really. Tim, it really is not a simple job. It's a, it has become a highly complex job. The last time that I know that selectmen really took over, had control of this job, um, it gets ahead of you. You need somebody whose job it is to pay attention to this new regulations, new guidelines, new bookkeeping requirements from the state, um, staying in touch with all, having a uh, liaison with all the agencies that can deliver help so that money isn't coming out of this town. It is complex, Tim. It truly is. It, it, it sounds to be. Yeah. These are state mandated, state regular. We, we are forced into complying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, on the other side, there is, it can be run well or it cannot be run well. I'm not going to make a comment on how this is being run, but I will say that for the size of our town and the economic level of the people in our town, Effingham is doing pretty well as far as welfare cases. Well, I'm just thinking that for the size of our town yeah. and the size of the staff that we currently employ right. during the week here, yeah. that can't be handled within that administration office out here mm -hmm. by either the town clerk, the uh, assistant, the deputy No, clerk. I, I honestly don't think it can it, be. It's too overwhelming. There's yeah. too much other stuff to go yeah, on. Yeah, there is. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and it's too easy to make mistakes. Because we need to start cutting corners. We need to start trimming. Yeah. I, yeah we I, don't I, need positions that we don't need. We don't need paid positions that yeah. we don't need. Uh, just to, uh, either you want to jump in here, feel free. <laughs> feel free. The, <laughs> I, I really do believe, Tim, is that the town of Effingham is running as close to the chest as it possibly can. I really do believe that. Um, I just want to see if he's, are, are you? No, I, I, I don't believe, myself, I don't believe that, Henry. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe that to be the case. Yeah. And no offense to Mark or anybody else, it's just like the dump, which is an issue I've had in the past. Three people working at the dump, when freedom pulls off the same thing with one man in the winter time. Mm -hmm. All right, why are we different? Why, do we have some overwhelming trash problem that freedom doesn't? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, as say far that? as having, uh, uh, Mark, I, <coughs> we're going to be speaking with you tonight. If you want to talk about, yeah, I'll bring it up. we can bring it up then. Okay. Um, I do know that Mr. Pike wanted to, yeah, please I did, state your name. Right, Liz. Paul Pike. Uh, I did the Welfare Administration as a selectman for five years. Yeah. I get totally burnt out on it. It's very difficult to deal with people in need, um, that are truly in need, and then you have to deal with people that only think they're truly in need, and the other selectmen didn't want to do it. So we did end up soliciting somebody to, mm -hmm. to do the job, because it, it's very time consuming. You have to meet with these people when they show up, and as a selectman, you're not here. And there's confidentiality things. That, I mean, I've learned so many things about people, some people, I, that I can't share. And that's not something a selectman wants to be in a position of doing. And as far as what, well, before Maureen, we had the cobbles doing it. But as far as Maureen doing this job, she's done a, she's done a better job than I ever did. Thank you. She's actually 
her budget has actually gone down this year because she hasn't had the need, and she's 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 just good at it. Thank you. And and whatever amounts we spend for Maureen to do it is well worth it. Yep. Because she takes her job seriously and she does a great job at it. Okay. Where previous selectmen, previous selectmen before I did it, I would say some were more than generous. Mm -hmm. They just because it was easy. It's easy to be generous with the town's money. It's it's harder to be stingy with the town's money, and that's where you get burnt out at. So, this this idea that a special person to handle a specific duty in the town, it is it's required. Right. It's not something you can just pick up. Right. So, um, will it further this particular issue? <clears throat> just no. I, I think. Chris Ames, one point on Moody Road. I've just asked that kind of a point of order. I think this is borderline going against your policy for discussion. Right. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Including have enough transfer station. Okay. I, I, I'm, I don't want to move on unless you feel like you had, to, had your chance to say your piece. No, I'll put it in writing. Okay. Right. Uh, anybody else for public comment? Please state your name for the record. Um, Karen Payne, yep. and I'm here on behalf of the Preservation Society. We had um, submit a request in writing, and I just thought that I would come personally. We've got a lot of um, projects and buildings and ground improvement and rehabilitation happening in our 200-year-old building that we're very excited about. It turns 200 in 2016. Um, and one of those projects is to start to bring the public around the library side of the building to the back instead of up and down Route 153. For decades, people have parked in the back and then approached the building from Route 153, but there's really a, um, a narrow strip there between the building and the road. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do some landscaping to bring them around the other side of the building. Part of that will uh, involve a set of steps to kind of get up and down the slope a little bit more easily. So you're talking and about shifting the parking to the... Parking's there. Right. We're talking about shifting, getting people in the habit of walking around the, okay, the, yeah, the library side of right. the building okay. instead of the 153 side. I got you. Foot Parking. traffic. So yeah. um, we'll, we'd like to put in some steps and to keep with the, since we are in the historic district, and <clears> since it is a 200-year-old building, we'd like to do it with stone or granite. Um, and there happens to be a few chunks kicking around town at this point and maybe some more that will appear from some bridge work. And I just wanted to put in the word that uh, we would gratefully uh, accept pieces that would work as steps um, for our building okay. if such pieces become available okay. to be considered. Well, I, I kind of treat that the same as I would <coughs> fill from ditches. I mean, you're sort of on a list. If the town ends up with some stone, yeah, okay. With chunks of uh, yeah. grant. Right, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. To keep us, to keep right. us in mind as there. Uh, anything else for public comment? Can I answer her? Yeah, yeah. Um, we are going to take out the Stevens Oak Bridge, which is all, all granite to granite. It's a stone culvert. So we will have a lot of, of granite uh, left over from that job. Plus, we have quite a few pieces from the uh, building that we tore down on School Street. So I'm sure we can work with, with, some, with some granite. Awesome, thank you. Again, Chris Shane, 120 Moody Road. Just to clarify what you just said, just roll mind, Henry. We're not treating the granite like we are roadside fill, are we? Well, no, I meant in the sense that if somebody put a list if the town has some granite and it has no particular use for it, if somebody, you know, I have a nonprofit in the town that's willing, if they could use some of it, it seems a reasonable place to put it, provided it doesn't cost us any more to deliver it there than where we would end up disposing of it anyway. So right. just, just for clarification yeah. purposes, because yeah. I'd like to get on the list of granite too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if we end up with a huge pile of it, it's very much like we did with the stuff from the ditches, is to just let people know. If we, we do have enough to get rid of, uh, yeah, it would probably be a lottery. Yeah. Would we do the granite from Townhouse Road? Yeah. The granite from Townhouse Road? I don't know. <coughs> what granite was that? All the culverts. I don't think we replaced them. We, I don't think they replaced that granite when they did. I think they reused it. Oh. I'm trying to think of where the 
Then it covered well. No, no, I mean, the head is on the end. So I think they're still there. Uh, that's one up by John Nitz's they took out and put concrete in. All right. I don't know. Uh, any other public comment? If not, Jonathan, you're up. Yes, one we put this week. Okay, two weeks worth. I guess road for fire up at the nation at Carl Five Up Man. I was run for electric reaction, Kitchen Road, Whipping Swamp Road, Chet Green, 61, 200, Hard Running Town. Thomas Road, the bus fire. Thomas Road, the Chet Cut Spots. Penny Drive, Chet Green, 61, 201, Hard Running Town. I was run for fire evacuation, Cut Five Up Man. In route, route 25 is south, 61, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, how much time does that cost us when a workman tripped the alarm up there? I mean, do we usually get a call pretty quickly saying? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Yeah, okay. It's because the saga continues, you know. <laughs> yeah. And by, I'm assuming they are doing a lot of work up there right now. Oh, yes, they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, plan discussion. This week we have Mark from the transfer station. Any particular issue, Mark? I, you know, you can, Lawrence, do you want to bring yeah, right. up the, what we did there this evening, this afternoon? Uh, yeah, we can. <coughs> we took a look at that area where it floods behind the, the, the uh, first key and it's come to the first compactor, and it looks like there's a low area there, and then there's a couple of places where it's heaved up. We should cut out, put some gravel back in, and then pave it so we can pitch it to the uh, other side of the, of the uh, parking lot and then also need to be ditched around the can that holds the tires because we have a culvert that's on the other side of the can that, that's about 18 inches lower than the parking lot so we can we have plenty of pits to if we just ditch it around there that would take care of that water in the paving. Uh, would also slope the parking lot to that ditch. Yeah, but Mark, as it is you now with the way the puddle forms, you were saying that there's time well, to actually shut, shut it down. Well, people have come in and seen that whole side shut down before. I mean, and if I don't shut it down, I forget about it, and people get out in their sneakers. I'm the troublemaker. But um, I mean, coming all the way up almost to the shot. Yeah, yeah. I know the other problem you had down there was uh, oil. Yeah, oh yeah, well, I'm going to need a new... You think it will need a new container? Yeah, because it's warped over the years. Okay. And the rain's getting in, and the catch thing underneath, or, or something built over it, something simple. Right. I mean, we find some steel roofing down back or something, or build something over it. Well, I, the only thing I worry there is sharp edges and stuff. You just having a tarp that was big enough to expand. Yeah, we got it wrapped around it. You, I don't know if you noticed it when you were there. Right. But we got a tarp around it. Right I now. mean, it strikes me as is that. It's but right now I have a. <clears throat> yeah. Right. The catch thing underneath is full. Right. That holds 53 gallons. Yeah. Okay. Um, that has to be separately. Right. Well, good. you had the problem once before yeah. with the leaky yeah. barrel. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah, I know it is. Uh, it's a cost for the company. Yeah. So the problem is, is that 53 gallons is meant to catch the amount of right. oil in one barrel, but it fills up with water because water, it's getting down. Water, when it's mixed, All right. they charge the town more um, to have it taken care of. Is there a, a make? We can probably get that through NRRA. Yes. All right. Do you want to start the process on? I can go. Okay. Right. Just see what it costs yeah. to get another one and yeah. run it by and have the office run it by us when they get the quote. Okay. I'm going to address Mark on the 
the people working there, I understand what you're saying. Okay, is uh, kind of out of my hand there. Um, we have one guy when he works two days, and one guy works one day. Mark, there's three, is there? A yeah, time? yeah, right. There's three of us. There. That's correct. Right. But we have one guy take a day off every Sunday to go to church. And then well, Al, he uh, stands in. Mark, Mark, I, it's, I don't want to talk about individual employees. The question yeah. on the table is, is but, it, no, is, he, is he, it he the sense of... He wants to know what's going on, which he should know. Yes, I know, but don't, we don't need to talk about and, particular employees. it's not employees. your position to defend us. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's and a question of whether or not, whether or not it's required, mm -hmm. whether or not for safety, for safety sake, what the reasoning the town has. Well, to you have to have two. By law, you're supposed to have two employees there. Right. I, when I took my state, test, you have so to you have, have one in freedom. That's what the law yeah. is. Yeah. But okay, um, you, yeah. Do you want to give me what puppy next a week? Yeah, go for it. You yeah, they're going to ask any more of you, and it doesn't right. matter. You should be happy with whatever you get paid as a salary. Yeah, I am. I'm happy. You should I'm, do I'm, the same job. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm going to oh, stop. We're not gonna Mark, Mark I'm going to stop that conversation now because we're starting to well, talk about it. Mark, 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 Mark. Mark, nothing to do with Mark, you, Mark. Mark, <laughs> look forward, please. We ended the conversation because <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> look forward. We're, Mark, we're talking problem. about individuals, and we're not doing that. Okay. It's a question of whether or not there was too many people working there. Your opinion is it works fine. As manager of the station. Okay. Okay, I got one other thing to bring up. Yep. And that's it. Um, Easter holiday. Yep. Uh, it is a hard time for the employees here. I mean, you know, they got families. That Sunday. That Sunday. Easter's always on us. It's always on us. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I had one person who was supposed to cover for another one, and I got sick. Right. Okay, I was there, you know, by myself. Yeah. No big deal. I can handle it. There ain't no big deal. But it, it seems like every year the issue comes up. You know, I, I, the, the families are coming up from out of state, their grandchildren, you know. Yeah. They like to be with their family on Easter. What's the date for Easter? Are we looking? Changes. 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 We did, yeah. Okay, yeah. So right. this is for next step. <laughs> well, I just see. You know, I, I, I saw the anchor. You know, well, I, what would would it be a real big deal for the town people to have that day off? Why not work Monday? Hey, 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 hey the conversation is up here. No. Um, Cheryl, you want to just start that for a discussion? Yep. Yeah. Right. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on public comment? Yeah. About <laughs> Easter. Yeah. I thought that we used to be closed on Easter in yeah, the, old, the old rules. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe somewhere it got taken yeah. off. Uh, we'll put it on the agenda. For I think next it's a week. great idea to close we'll, Easter. We'll look into it. Yeah. Okay. And maybe even pay the guys for the holiday. Well, we really are kind of out of public comment. Yeah. <laughs> to do with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. You have a question for the I transfer mean, station. Yeah, yes. Transfer station. Okay. I yeah. agree with Bill. I think it should be a holiday. I want to cut where we can too, but let's right. take care of our own when it comes to that. Okay. I also was very vocal when they worked on Veterans Day. Right. Every one of our transfer station employees are veterans. Right. And I thought that was completely inappropriate. Okay. Mm -hmm. be there. Yeah, that yeah. should happen again. I All right. I think they should get that day off. Uh, Okay. Lump those two together, and we'll just start looking yes. at. Uh, actually, she also sort of mentioned the fact that review uh, days closed for mm -hmm. town employees. Major holidays. Yeah. 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 All right. <coughs> That's it. One second. Yeah. Uh, Is this sorry, for sorry, the transfer sorry, station? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I guess my question is how many holidays do they get in the year, and are they paid for all the holidays? Uh, you know that? They're I just mean, closed. Except for like... What's well, Christmas and... Like so we, so you want veterans, yeah. you want to add veterans and you want to add Easter. I didn't know if there was any others that... Okay, well, as I, said, Christmas yeah. Yeah. as I said, it's an issue that we're not going to solve tonight, <laughs> but I have it in the minutes. And we'll, we will review 
the policy on okay. days that municipal employees don't have to come to work. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. Okay. Well, because we're not in public comment, I wasn't being. Uh, Lawrence, you want to start here? Comments and reports? Um, yeah. On the, uh, I got down here, crack sealing. Um, I thought we need to crack seal, re crack seal the Tunnis Road. Right. I, I looked at the Bailey Road because it's got a lot of sand on it, so you can't really see right. it. But we should do those two roads again. And then I said, we ought to finish. I watch. I watch. And then if, if we have anything left over, start at the foot of pea pasture and go to it's 25. Pea pasture. Yeah. Well, when This is 2016, Lord. Uh, <laughs> this is 2016. By Neville's house. Washburn. You okay. know where it is, Chris. <laughs> um, pea uh, Winter Road. Yeah. Right. From Winter Road and go to it's 25 because that's the right. okay. piece that we yeah. paved um, the That one other section we did at, at the Pine River Bridge. Yeah, I looked at that tonight. And there, is, there is quite a few questions. Well, so maybe we should we do didn't that. We didn't do any. Remember, that was the it. tail end of the the, pave, the big paving job right. on Townhouse Road. Yeah. Um, and they, they had like half a load left over and they just said, you want to put it down. So we did no prep work. But I, it, it, do you think it's, I think it's still worth it. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, okay. So why don't we pick New that up? Yep. Pick that up before we hit Green Mountain. Yep. Does that make sense to you, Lynn? Yeah. Yeah. So we all agree, man? Yeah, and yeah. basically it's um, start here and run until we, we used up the entire amount we budgeted, which was $15,000, right? right. Yeah. Um, so do you want me to call Lake Region? Are we going to use him again? Or we want to put it off a bid? Or I think I, I was I think he's, I was pretty happy with him, yeah. and, and we got less. Anybody else doing it, we're spending a lot more time getting them here. Right. Yeah. So, so I mean, it falls within our, our purview to go right. that high. So yeah. I'd be willing to use him because he gave. Well, we got to we got to get him out and look at transfer station anyway. Yeah. So we might as well right. look at the yeah roads at the same time. Yeah. And when we come up with an estimate on that, well, just so everybody, you want to talk about what we really did look at in the decision a little more on that on the on, on the transfer station because um, we had an area twenty four feet wide by about eighty five feet long that we need to reslope. Reslope yeah. with by the well, use of pavement. We'll, like I say, if we get uh, Lake Region out here, we'll get a price on that, yeah. and then we can go for mayor. Yeah, okay, on that. And then we looked at the ditching on the back side, um, because of the, the yeah, slope the that's in there is un not stable. We need to put some, it's not just a question of digging the, digging the, the uh, matter out of the ditch, we need to stabilize the bank a little bit. Yeah, with some stone, yeah, yeah, but that's that will be that won't be uh, any amount of money, right. The biggest thing would be the pavement. Okay. Um, All right, yeah, so if you want to get in touch with him, Lawrence, do, because okay. we just, you know, line up the time when, he, I mean, it needs to get warmer and all, but line up the time to do it. Well, we better sat now. Yeah. We would be into December. But right, yeah, I know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> or it doesn't go at all. All right. Um, under Rokens, I went over and looked. Uh, Today, it drove the dirt roads and stuff like that. The pothole that you're aware of, the worst one was on Pine River Road. Yes. Um, there's sections on uh, Hunter's uh, uh, Wilkinson Swamp Road. Um, I didn't see any bogged areas. I drove all the way through it. There's a couple soft areas that have a few ruts, but there's no place that cars are getting stuck that I've seen. And that's after yesterday's rain, too, so it looked pretty good. Um, I did part of Granite Road, I did the, my paved roads. Um, I've been looking at those, and it just depresses me. But uh, when, uh, you know, Jones Road, when I'm really paying attention to it, um, that's a road we need to consider when we start looking at paving projects coming up, because that surface is starting to fracture. Um, we did. Uh, I did get a request from the uh, zoning enforcement officer to. Uh, uh, change your hours to 5 to 6.30 instead of 5.30 to 7. Uh, the reason being is is that when we close, when we don't have a meeting on the fourth Tuesday of the month, it leaves her here alone for a fairly long time. If she can change those hours, and, uh, uh, and as she recommended them, um, if we think it's okay, we might want to ask her, you know, make sure that she thinks that that's not going to inconvenience clients, but I think she has more people coming in at the beginning of her time period 
Well, what that would mean is on the fourth Tuesday that there'll be somebody in the front office anyways while she's here. So it, it's only on the only on the. Well, no, she wanted to change the hours. I think in general, it's a lot easier to post one set of hours than to say it's this. Um, uh, but her indication was is that, and what I see when I'm sitting at these meetings and watching people walk out back, more people are coming in closer to 5.30 than 7. So I think it might actually be a benefit to some people. And what were the hours, Henry, that she was thinking? thinking of going to from 5 to 6.30 instead of 5.30 to 7. But do you have any opposition to that? Well, no, that way there will give a chance for me to talk to us if she's, right. if she's out at 5 to, uh, 6.30. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. So you happy enough for that? Yeah, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just... Uh, can you just put a note in her box yeah, saying that, you know, start posting the hours, make sure it gets changed on the web page and all that kind of stuff? Okay. Uh, at this point, Lenny, you don't have anything under comments and reports, but you may have a comment. Anything you want to say? Uh, no, in the potholes. Okay. Some appeared yesterday on the school street. Right. right. Oh, um, as long as we're talking to Rose and to Kurt, when Lenny and I were looking at this, is that at the end of our meeting, remember we were talking about, you know, doing a little get together, I mean, a little discussion at the end of the meetings. It strikes me is because we're trying to keep such a close tab on the road budget this year, is, is that after we've done all our regular work, is to pull out the road budget and really go over it and look at what we're spending because there's no question about your work and stuff like that. So if we get a week when there's a, a, a particularly good pile of bills on that particular part of our budget is to sit back and the three of us sit down and, and go over it and really look at it. Because right. that's going to give us all three a handle if we say we've got a quarter mile of ditch that needs to be cleaned by the end of the year, we should know that a quarter mile costs about X to do. And uh, so I might that be a good idea. So we could do that tonight because there was a pretty good set of bills coming in today. And we need to be very careful because we're really looking at about 30 grand here. Yeah, that's all that's left after we get done with the uh, budget committee. Yeah, to, to I see mean, you? Yeah, yeah I, just so everybody's aware, I, mean, I have no problem vacating and going into another room to do that, um, but we just recess the meeting well, to, and move it over. That's not until quarter of seven. Right, right. yeah. Um, so now we get down to old business. Uh, I'll bring this up. I did talk with a resident from town who's willing to work as a representative for Lakes Region Planning, and I told him, I made a deal with him that if he did it, I'd do it. So um, Tom is going to, uh, nice enough, or Ralph Thompson is nice enough to take the position, and, and I'm willing to go with him. Um, so we'll get in touch with them and let them know. As we'll be the two representatives. Okay. Um, one thing we did talk about at the work session last week um, was requesting that re department heads review their uh, personnel policies and rules of procedure. So um, if you both agree, that I, I think it's a good idea. I don't. They may be doing it. I mean, I really need to ask and find out when the last time that uh, the fire department and the uh, police department reviewed those particular policies. Because when you call, uh, ask for the Department of Labor, they do recommend that they be reviewed on a fairly consistent basis. So, um, well, it's easy enough to ask the fire chief. Do you know the last time that those were reviewed through your January th this year? Yeah. Do it every January. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't sure. So, uh, I'll check with the chief and find out what that is. Um, were, were any significant changes made or anything? No. No. Okay. Go over and make sure everybody understands what they are. Right. So, if we were to read the one that's on file here, that represents what's operative down at the station? I believe so. I gave okay. All right. Okay. I gave a copy to them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'll ask the chief the same question. And then um, I think it might be worthwhile verifying is what you have on file is what's on file here. That might be worth doing. So. Yep. Okay. All right. And, uh, um, Granite Post, Lawrence? Yes. Um, we I, we have six that we bought six last year. Yeah. We need eight, so I said let's take the money out of this year's budget mm -hmm. and buy the other two and get the total that we need, of it, which is eight. Right, and they're still over there. No, we we never at, took possession, but no, we, yeah, okay. They're still at uh, yeah Dalgoats in uh, Laconia. Okay. So, um, so I just need your authorization to buy two more. Okay. How are they delivering here? Is that part of the price, or do we? Well, they'll deliver right to the uh, cemetery. Oh, they will. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Whenever we get ready to 
So, and that particular money is coming out of the? Be coming out of the cemetery fund. Yeah. Okay. All right. What well, just clear enough? It, I mean, it strikes me as it's a reasonable use of the money. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, need, we don't have money enough left over to do yeah. sick, so yeah. I should wait till this year yeah. and we get the other two. Yeah. It's, it's fitting in the answer you're screening the post, but the primary purpose is they give us some measuring coordinates right. for making sure we sell people the right lot, right? Yeah. Well, once you, you put probably should find somebody to put them in so they don't sit up there while we're looking for somebody. They sit there very long, they'll be missing, right? Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Um, um, somebody already said they want granite. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kind of granite up there. <laughs> Good point, Lenny. <Yeah. laughs> nice catch. <laughs> okay, the other, the other thing I had was a, the, the paint session. Um, to do with Brandy, does she have a key or who's... I'm trying to figure out what you, the paint session. You know, they was they wanted to use the building to do a paint on Friday night. Paint. This Friday night, she brought forward two weeks ago. Right. About holding a painting class. Right. So. And so that's this Friday. Yeah. Probably gonna get in. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Does she she have a key, or does mm -hmm. somebody in the intriguing that department have a key, or <laughs> how are we gonna let them in here and let them back out? And who's gonna make be make sure that the Buildings locked back up. Yeah. All right. Um, do you have a contact number? We do. I, you do? We do. We took, she came today. Okay. To see how that was all going to work out. All right. Claudia recommended that we wait until after the meeting tonight because, and get in touch with her because it was on the agenda and we weren't sure what your questions were going to be. Right. But the question is, is who's is responsible for letting them in and making sure it's locked right. up? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, Lawrence, I think it'll be one of us. Henry, are you're you, an artist. Are you volunteering, Henry? <laughs> <laughs> Henry, I point out what Ossipy does is if, if they're using the gym, yeah. they can sign the key out in the selectman's office, right. and then they sign the key back in when they turn, and turn it back in right. the event. Yeah. So we could do the same thing. Yeah, they could put it in an envelope in the mailbox, because that's a locked mailbox, yeah. Okay. And when... They could get in the front door, but the way this building is locked up at night is, is that this, the bathroom, the kitchen here are the only place they can access. So. Okay. All right. Topic related? Uh, okay, yeah. Because he brought it up. Yeah. They, they, that is absolutely true. The key policy, they also have to sign a form that says that they leave it in the condition that they right. received it. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I, I can... That's part of the application that she already filled out. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, I'm not opposed to this. If, if there's a key that can be checked mm -hmm. out, it's an assumption. Yes. Okay. And then the responsibility is to stick it in a little envelope or, or just put it in the box. I mean, I don't suppose it has to be in the envelope. Are you comfortable with that? Because that you key only key accesses this box. room. Each, each yeah, room. that box doesn't have an access without a key. Yeah. Each time they want to use the room, they come to the office to get the key. Right, yeah. And then return the key. Right, yeah. Okay. yeah. If they're going to do it once a month, they don't get to keep the key all month, right? Does that okay. make sense to you? <laughs> make sense to you? Okay. All right, well then. Now, they can't put the key in the box if you're talking about the mailbox because you require a key to get into Well, oh, I thought it had a slot. No. Okay. So it's why the don't... bottom of the door has a slot. Yes, well, that's what I was just going to suggest. <laughs> all right. If it just gets put under the door. Okay. Under now, I recommend give them an envelope. Just oh, so an envelope right. that will give them the key in the envelope. Right, okay. And then they can do it that way. Okay, excellent. We'll draw up the policy. Thank you for bringing that up. And you've got okay, and the other thing I had was Venerable Bridge. <clears throat> um, we want to get a engineer to come out and check our abutment to see if we can use them or just call them and get a get a price to see what it's going to cost well, us to check those abutments from what i understand what you the way i see it from what you said is is that no matter what we do there in if we in other than doing nothing right those abutments need to be checked and until we find and, and no price can be established or quote can really be established until we know whether or not they're usable right so right. there's no way around in my as I'm seeing it, Lawrence, there's no way around 
checking out the abutments. But, but do you want me to call an engineer or a couple of engineers and, and get that better? Um, do you have a rough idea what it might cost? Well, I'll get a price of engineer. I mean, I won't have it come out. Right. We get a price and then we'll discuss the price. and, and Right. Yeah, in the sense of whether or not I want to put it out to a competitive bid. I mean, I kind of like to put stuff out to competitive bids. Yeah, but if just... it's, I, I don't see it going over our, our estimate that we have. Okay. I mean, um, it could, but I, I don't see it. Yeah, no, Lawrence, I don't mind doing that, but please, when you set up correspondence with them, run it through the office, don't run it through your house. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, please, yeah. Yeah, I mean, get the ball rolling on that, yeah. And then, Lawrence, what I said, one of the things that we'll be doing is, is that any time we get a project like that, we'll start a folder on it, so all communications go in the folder, um, and it's sort of a master copy for the selectmen to look at. So some, if somebody gets a question of when did this happen, when did that happen, we have one single place that we can go look for it. Right. And then there was a couple of, a couple of things in the mail folder yeah. that we should discuss. Oh, maybe this is it. I think I put them in the action folder here. Okay, the Lake Region Planning Commission. Somebody wrote in here with pencil, says, help us on bridge costs. Is that... Well, it was a question. Is that something they... It's a question. Do? What they did is they, they published uh, guidelines and whether or not it's more for... I think it's more for engineers. Bridge building guidelines as adopted in the state of New Hampshire. I think that's what that's about. So it says applicants can apply for 50% of the cost of economic okay, and infrastructure so sure. development. Right. So... Infrastructure would be. Yeah, no, no, okay. I was thinking of something else, Lawrence. So. so maybe that's something that could be brought up right. if you have a meeting with the uh, Lake Region Planning well, Commission? I, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll give them a call and find out what the criteria is on that. Do you want to just show uh, yeah, for like new businesses, uh, grant, grant, grant information from Lake Region Planning? Okay, um, the other one here we got. Is uh, requesting funds in the amount of eight hundred dollars from the interest of the council and the Evanham Falls Cemetery. That's just it's a uh, trust, right? And that's the interest on and the. And it's been fairly standard that they've been doing that so on an we, annual basis. So we have basis. to approve that, even though that's not a town cemetery. Um, we have to approve. Well, the trust. because the, I think the money's held in a municipal trust, mm -hmm. so it goes from us to the trustee of the trust fund. Okay. Um, so if it's coming out of the. If it's the interest on the trust, I don't have any problem with right. that. Yeah, I mean that was one of the uh, one of the overall problems they had with the small trust on cemeteries and stuff like that. That's why they're really getting away from it. Is they end up being a municipal responsibility, but they're they're kind of not. But that's just the history of the financial. <laughs> And we did get a, when we're talking about the bridge, uh, we did get a letter from H.E. Bergeron looking for some information on yeah, uh, see, that. Yeah, that went. Might be in the store over there. In the folder, I guess. No. Um, this is H.E. Uh, Bergeron, who had done some work for us. They were looking at a town warrant, and they're speaking about what we put in for the Stevens Road culvert, uh, how much we raised, uh, and they wanted to know whether or not they wanted to. We wanted them to come back down and talk with us again. I don't think that's a bad idea because not just the Stevens Road Bridge, but also the Granite Road Bridge, and to refresh our minds about um, because they were extremely well versed in the uh, bridge aid through the state yeah. and I don't think it would hurt the three of us to hear that conversation again so I kind of didn't be in favor of asking them to come down um, but to stipulate that we'd also like to talk I'll get some more information on the bridge aid possibilities for Granite Road yeah yeah makes sense okay all right so um, just when you get this Cheryl Yep. A little note, trying to set up a time they can come down on a Tuesday. Okay. And as far as something like that goes, how would you all feel about having it done at a, you know, if we held a, a work session? 
So that was the one issue that we were talking well, I about. I think, I don't know if we want to do it. Well, a web session is public invited, but I yeah. think the public should be uh, be able to hear what they have okay. to say. Okay, so, about so it. do it at a regular meeting. I agree. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, so just not the fourth Tuesday. That's all. Yeah. Make, good? I'm fine with it. Okay. And then we had the silent poor. Um, does anybody in the audience, we need a point three trustees. Um, and as far as I remember, I can't remember what the amount that, that um, Carol was telling and Fister was saying was in that. I mean, it was small, but not insignificant. I can't remember. Yeah. Either. She had two names. She gave them to us? No, I haven't. I didn't no, see them. I didn't see them. No. Okay. All right. Well, contact her and why don't we carry that over for next week and yep. see if we can get a little uh, I know she's been out of out of the yes. area for quite a, uh, the last couple of days mm -hmm. so okay and just supposition on my part but the trust there used to be trustees in silent poor right. who administered that fund for the purpose of it was basically right. welfare money yeah um, I'm guessing Carol has been doing a lot of research into various trusts and what the restrictions are on them. Mm -hmm. My guess is that in her research on that trust, she probably discovered that there have to be trustees right. specifically for that fund in order to disperse right. the funds. Yeah. I, I guess you'd have to check with mm -hmm. them to see if they're willing, but it would seem to me, unless it's not allowed, wouldn't it just make sense to appoint the three women who are trustees to the trust fund? Right. Yeah. She yeah. said at the meeting that they had to be three Diff people different from okay. the Okay. The trust All right. That's the reason but we'll just we'll move this forward to next week because without her here, it's a little difficult to come to a decision. So, okay. Uh, I did follow up on the South River oil spill, and I got from uh, Mr. <coughs> Watts from DES. Um, he did respond originally to the thing, um, he, and I just would like everybody to know he really gave kudos to our emergency response team for the what they did when they discovered that there was the oil spill in South River. He says it was handled by the town. It was handled very, very well. Um, the question that was raised last week is the boom that they put across the river is it still functioning? And when I talked to him, he had been there, I think, the day before or two days before and replaced the absorbent packs that were in that particular boom. And in his estimation, it's, run, it's doing everything it's meant to do. Um, uh, there are efforts being made to do uh, remedial work on the property because there's some state aid for oil spills. I mean, we looked into it, Lawrence, when we were thinking about that tank up there. So the response from DES was pretty good. The guy called me right back. Um, he did have a record of it. He did say, and I don't know if it's coming in the office, but he <coughs> did say he'd send a timeline to the town you know, what DES's response was and stuff like that. So it, it's as good news as it can be. Uh, Uh, Lenny, anything else you want to bring up? No. Okay. Lawrence? Um, <laughs> oh, did it, the permit for DES on the bridge, did it go out? Yes. Yeah. Did it go back then? It was in the full. Okay. Did you the sign permit? No. No, just that they get the application. Okay, okay. All right. No, no, they ain't been approved yet. Right, but right. they've got the yeah. Okay. It was in the uh, it's in the works. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So you all set, Mark? I guess that was it. Okay, uh, anything else with public comment? I'm gonna go with ladies first. In the back, please. Linda <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, No, I'm sorry. Linda Redwood, South Slate Road. Uh, I know the locks have been changed. Can you tell me how many keys we have? Uh, I know I don't have one. Um, I don't know overall how many there are. I can find out. But Cheryl, um, you, would you know? I how know many? that there are specifically two. If if um, Claudia has another one, on and there should be one in the Knox box. Yes, right. correct. That's is correct. there? Okay, yes. There is. Okay. So that would mean maybe three. three. Do you have right. a key yourself? I have a key. Okay. Claudia. All right. And right now that's all that's been made. As far as you know. Okay. Yes. So on the South River. Um, they usually stop that event. Will they? I mean, do they work to 
together. Oh, you mean in the sense of the oil spill where they put right. fish in? I, I don't think that's going to stop the fish and game from stocking the river. I mean, okay. it was a fairly, I mean, minor oil <gasps> spill. Like, yeah. Just I, yeah. Um, the, the state is currently doing water testing, but the guy from DES was pretty happy with the way the river was looking. So. And you said you thought you'd have something on um, the parking lot from Bergeron? Not yet, though. I, well, hopefully I'll have it next week. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the other issue I have is, is that the woman that was writing the grants, I've got a couple of emails into her, but I, I just hadn't heard back yet. But I'm going to try to get her to come down. I'll find out whether or not she's willing to do just a discussion with us and set that up. Um, I'll try to get a couple of dates from her so we don't double up with the night that Bergeron is showing up. So. Uh, one other thing is, today when I went to the office, the door was locked. Good. I've got to give them credit for that. Good. Good. Even though you thought we saw you coming? <laughs> <laughs> that may be why it was you locked. Said no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you skip all the new business? Or? Uh, yes, you did. Did we did? Oh, uh, yeah, well, very good. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, under new business, that's kind of what I was doing with uh, the department heads and stuff like that. There were things that got brought up that, at the work discussion that we had. And so everybody else's, the other things that we did talk about during that work session was uh, looking at making some sense between the uh, physical things the road needs to be done and the amount of money that the town can afford to spend on them, trying to come up with some plans on that. We do have a good road plan, but we've never put it together with the financing. Um, we did talk, uh, Lenny's going to go to the class, uh, but it's not till May, so by that time it'd be old hat for you, Lenny, but on the uh, training. And uh, we'll talk on 91A uh, in the sense of run business through the office, not through your home computer and stuff like that. I mean, if somebody's going to wants to email you something, email it to the town and CC yourself. I'll have them CC you, but the first address should always be town of Effingham. Um, but it's in the minutes too, and there is a copy out there. So, um, other anything else on public comment? Yes, Mr. Uh, well, sir. he was next to me. Yes, first name was one twenty movie room. Um, as far as that work session goes, the week prior to that, so like when Ed was brought up, um, the division of the road uh, workload. Yeah. And, and splitting up three yeah. different ways to that get input. Well, I, one of the things tonight, we're going to go over some of the, the billing that came in on our roads and stuff, and I thought that issue would come up. Um, we, we, do, we did get it. You divided up, Lawrence divided it up into three parts. I got over and checked about 80% of those roads after the rain yesterday. Um, most, of them, most of the ones, are the, all the dirt roads that I'm sort of responsible. I know Lenny's done a couple, and he's picked up some issues. And one of the things we're going to talk about is is it's the economy of scale. When you get a problem that needs to be dealt with, but not necessarily today, wait till you have more than one of them to have the guy go out and do it. But that's the sort of thing we want to discuss tonight. So So there was a discussion when you yeah. were the work. Okay. Yeah. In that same nature, um, the crack ceiling, the cemetery post, and the Grant Road Bridge contacting the engineers, I heard Fleck and Edwards say, I'll contact them three times. Yeah. Um, so as far as the vision of the workload goes, and so that we don't have a repeat of finger pointing and people getting mad and frustrated and things like that, and I think that that workload too should be spread yeah. out of who's contacting yeah. who and no offense to you yeah. warrants, but um, if, if the, again, you're all three responsible yeah. for the decisions that are made of this board, yeah. and if it's just coming from one end of the table, if they're calling them, and yeah. then pretty easy for people to say, well, you didn't do your job like you said you were yeah, Just on an, anecdotal, well. yeah, on an anecdotal level, Chris, there's been a couple <coughs> issues that came up in the last week because of the rain and stuff like that. And, you know, Lawrence would get a call for an issue where Lenny would call one of us, and, and we ended up, you call me each time. So no one is making a decision on their own anymore. Not what I said. Yeah. Okay. Not what I said. I said yeah. spread the worst load. Yeah. So, like, maybe instead of Lawrence calling uh, Lakes Region for crack ceiling, you can call them or Lenny can call them. Right. Or vice versa with the granite post in the cemeteries. Lenny worked with granite in the cemeteries. Maybe he can contact that company yeah. for the cemetery post. Maybe you can contact or I, you know, either one of you to solicit bids or whatever for the engineering. Okay. Just just point taken. Yeah. Okay. Food for thought. And what? Yep. I'm not done yet. 
<laughs> but as you guys speak and you go through the meetings, I'm glad, I'm glad that you have the second yeah. uh, public comment. I appreciate that. When it comes time to pay the transfer station, not that we like to delay things, but I think, and this discussion was brought up last year when we did the spots on Pine River Road. I'm not an expert in this. I'm not going to pretend to be. I do work for a highway department, and we work with the same agencies, a lot of the same agencies that this town does. It is our practice that when we have a paving project, we have all of our paving projects lined up and ready to go before we do the RFPs. That way they know that they're coming to do right. X amount of paving. Okay. And they're here once, and they pave everything in that town while they're there. That saves us money because they don't have to come back right. and haul the equipment and things like that. Yeah. Having said that, yes, the work needs to be done at the transfer station. I've seen the puddle. I'm familiar with that. And I don't want to see it delayed. But I think when you guys sit down and decide if and when any paving is going to be done in town, yeah. that those coincide so when the pavers come, they're paving, let's say, another section on Pine River Road and they do the transfer station. They're in town once. Right. I think that that will be more cost effective. Yeah, this particular year, we, we raised more <coughs> money to do road paving okay. this particular year. So it's a question of, it's, thank you, though. It's worth thinking of, are there any other small things that we might want to pave in town? Right off the top of my head, now I can't think of one. I mean, that's the only project I think that's going to require yeah. asphalt. If we do something at the town hall where we have to cut pavement yeah. or anything like that, it might be a small thing there. If that could all get done at once, I think it would be more cost effective yeah. to the town. Yeah, it's the same thing that when we were talking on the road stuff that sit back there when we get these small little repairs and on emergency repairs is to, in a sense, let them build up until we have make it worth coming out of the barn for. So. Did you want to say something? Else? Well, I was just going to answer Chris that we didn't raise it. We didn't raise any money for paving. So we're taking this uh, paving for the transfer out of the transfer fund. Well, probably uh, the uh, municipal building fund. We, yeah, we, got <coughs> I mean, we didn't. We didn't raise. Yeah, money for paving for roads. Right. Yeah. And the, the other thing was, is I I did contact Del Gilbert on the granite post, so I just felt that I should follow up with the other two posts so that we get the uh, yeah. eight posts that we need. And uh, on the granite road, I've I've talked to two engineers so far on the granite road, so. Um, I don't. I don't mind calling the engineers on the ground River again. And when they do come out, the board will meet. The whole board will meet the engineer, not just one person. Right. The last two times, it's only been one selectman that met that. And that'll be posted adequately before you all meet up. Yes. Yeah. That, that's our intention. <laughs> uh, anything else? Um, I'm going to come back. Oh, no, you were in the line. Yeah, Tim. Murphy. Tim, Tim Murphy. On the roads, any consideration given of my suggestion to look into creating a highway committee? We had a closed session. I had brought that up two weeks ago. Uh, we, we did start to talk about it a little bit the other night, just in the sense of is there any other way to look at the way that, and, and I'm not, I mean, there's a contract, and I'm not trying to get up under the contract, but to start looking at it, is there any other way to manage small repairs, small road work and stuff in the city <coughs> of Effingham well, that could keep it a more local kind of thing? I'm not talking about small repair. I'm talking about overall handling of the roads. I'm talking about purchasing a couple of vehicles, hiring staff, and creating a highway department. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. One that could also handle roadside mowing, cemetery maintenance, right. municipal buildings, transfer station if necessary, right. however we want to mold it. Yeah. But I'm asking <coughs> that it be looked into. That's just a point I, I that, that was where I was headed with that. Not, okay. not a, a one ton and, and a couple guys part time. Right. Okay, I, I understand that. Yeah. And I thought we did set aside $200,000 for paving. I thought there was a plan portions of Brightfield Road and Green Mountain Road this year. No. No, we didn't, we didn't do it this year. No. It, it was, was being a, looked it was at. It was being looked at at one point, and then the bridge issues came up. And the bridges took priority, and right. that's where we're at with yeah. that. Okay, right. just curious. Yep. I knew there was many times. Life intruded. Yeah, I had it in the back. Better recognize it. Name, please. 
Warren Spencer, Old Town Road. Unfortunately, I wear many hats in this town, and I feel like most of the time I need to keep my mouth shut. However, I would like to address the board. I'm a professional. I'm insulted when I get accused of doing something that I don't even know how to, how to express that. We all work together in this, these offices. All of us do different jobs, but we can also help each other. They can help with my job. I can do certain things for them, like answer the phone or take a piece of paper at a window. While I'm in that office, doing my job on my computer, looking only at my work. I know what confidentiality is. I hold a lot of people's uh, information in this town. And I don't say anything to anybody. And for most people know that Henry and I don't talk about stuff at home, as you can usually tell by the looks on either one of our faces when somebody is talking to us about something and we're going, what? Believe it or not, that's your prerogative. But as far as laughing and joking and having a good time, that's a sign of a good, healthy office working. Those people happened to be on their lunch break while they were laughing and joking and having a good time. I was sitting in there answering the phone and answering, doing the window. I was also saving the town money. Instead of running the heater out there, I sat in here and did my work. I wasn't just down here on a lark. So I do just want the selectmen to know that, and I would hope we're not supposed to bring people's names up in public. Please don't. That got obviously tossed out the window. You should have stopped that immediately. But I just felt like I had to stand up and say that because I would hope the town has enough faith in me to do my job no matter where I'm doing it, whether it's home, whether it's in my car, whether it's in this building, or whether it's out back. I'm a professional. Thank you. Anything else? As far as the fire department goes, we're going to have a training on the mini pump on the Saturday, 9 o'clock. Okay. It's supposed to run like till 4. So if somebody wants to come down and lunch. view it. Okay. Hot dogs. Oh. Bring your own lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Bring lunch for everybody. Now, is, is, there, is there a representative from a company or is this yes. reading the manual? Or? No, no. The representative coming out, that's part of the. In the contract price, you get so many hours of training by one of the representatives of the right. company. Classroom and then practical. Right. <coughs> so you actually charge the system and run yeah, water through it? This is a CAP system, which I'm not even familiar with because that's a whole new oh, ball what game. system? The CAP system, compressed air pump. Okay, yeah. It's a whole new ball game for me as well, so it's all a learning curve for everybody. So. Right. Uh, that's why you get to have a classroom, sit down. Find out, you know, how you activate it, when you activate it, when not to activate it. Right. And yeah. how to shut it down after it's been used, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Flush the line <coughs> okay. okay. Good. Any word on the replacement engine? Yeah, that's in there. Um, uh, could we get that in a week or two? Yeah. So it's just down the road there. Yeah. Cool. This that probably doesn't require training, that one. Oh, really some, you know. Familiarity, oh. but I mean that's Pumps run the same way, basically, right. just to know where the levers are and yeah. how to engage the pump. Yeah. Cool. Right. But that also comes with training hours. Right. Know, the price of the so the, uh, if somebody did want to come down and see the truck used during training, is that later in the day? I mean, you said first there's class, I'm assuming bring classroom rain, comes Bring through. your raincoat. Bring your raincoat. <laughs> <laughs> you need a target. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You never know that holes could get away from Yeah, that. right. Yeah. But I, more than one of us want to go, we'll have to put that. <laughs> I won't talk to you. I, I see you every Tuesday. Who wants How to go? <laughs> I think that's covered as long as we don't do town business. You know? If you can stand at opposite ends of the truck, you can't talk to each other. Excellent. Well, Thank you, CBA, Randy. I'll remind you of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was some, Mr. Thompson. Uh, are you going
going to have any discussion amongst yourselves regarding the York ranking of yes. out of season roads? Yes, we are. Okay, because the one that I'm thinking of hadn't thawed, hadn't gotten potholes, ruts, or anything. Right. In fact, the whole road, not just the part that's yeah. RSA April 10, right. didn't have any potholes or anything. Right. And I was shocked to see that. Yeah, no, it, it is on the, uh, it was one of the things that we were going to discuss. Okay, last week, or two weeks ago, you brought up about staking sites yeah. on the upper. That will be done before next week. Okay. Uh, the ground, I hadn't thought enough to drive stakes, stakes into, in. right. which verified my dislike of trying to York rake a road. Right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm going to take the sites. That will be done before you get to back in next week. Uh, and the other thing, and it keeps coming back, but it's still on the other list, Lawrence. Uh, and I think Chris has got a solution to this. Two, two years ago, you got involved with your nephew on walking the bounds of the town and finally got that done. And Chris has got the idea that somebody's got to do the line for freedom and the other person's got to do the line for recipe. <laughs> Good luck, Tom. <laughs> Don't say I never tried to get you out of something. Um, what about me? I want to see you walk the Austin one. I want to see him walk the freedom one. <laughs> freedom, freedom one is easy. We need a boat up there. Can tell you where the corner is. The... Wakefield line, we had walked. Yes. I'm we haven't wrote yep. up the... You haven't filed it yet. Right. Okay. But uh, I, I, I keep at the Charlie to get that done. And he keeps saying, yeah, I'll be done Tuesday, Tuesday. But his Tuesday ain't come yet. But anyway, we will get that done. <laughs> and the, the uh, off the line, I have taken some... Uh, uh, they call them waypoints mm -hmm. on where it crosses the road so that we can follow that line mm -hmm. when, well, I guess most any time now, most of the snow's on. So we can get yeah. You want your rubber boots on? Wait for the test. Well, yes, yeah. in some places, yes. It's marked pretty good, though. Yeah. It is marked out pretty well. But well, anything else? <laughs> yeah, speaking of, I get a question about the roads. What about the weight limits? We, don't know. Um, we normally wait until the state, state takes this off. Right. Yeah. Ospie's doing there is Friday, I guess. Okay. That's right. <laughs> 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 I'll tell okay. you Friday morning, they tell me the Cheryl, the sun's when, when you get a chance, do you ask Clark to stay in the habit of informing us that they've listed the weight limits? Yeah. Okay. Well, the state just picks the date. I mean, they don't. They just picked the date for the whole whole state. Right. I mean, it doesn't. Fool's come. Okay. Yeah, but that's what we've always done in the past. So. Well, you know, they were taking them off of wait, the Wakefield end, but they haven't taken them off of this end. No. Yeah. Well, um, so well I would say that the DOT garage that's in charge of this this part of 153, if that garage would let us know that the state lifted the weight limits, that would be great. Because then we could lift ours. I mean, unless we saw something that... You know, we had one particular section we knew we didn't want to, but um, I got to admit, as far as my understanding of what's going on underneath there, I got to think it's pretty close to being lifted now. Henry, regarding posting, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I really hate to be picky. I really don't like it. But two weeks ago, <laughs> Tuesday at quarter of eleven in the morning, waste management came down townhouse pulling a trailer. And again this morning. And again this morning. Yeah, okay. yeah. So they have been ignoring our request that they use state roads. Yeah. Okay. And Ospie hasn't stopped them this year. All right. Well, we believe in Ospie then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I tell you, I'm going to come in the office tomorrow. I'll give waste management a call and say, listen, yeah, okay. Yeah. How can how can we tell waste management? To, to stay off town roads and use state roads when the state roads are posted. We can't. Who, can't. Are we? Yeah. We can only tell them to use snow road. Yeah. Who are we to tell them to that was use what the agreement was. state yeah. roads? Good question. I'll find out with them. I mean, you know, 
If there's any way that I can. And you brought that up. Yeah, if, if I may add to that, I mean, you guys were attempting to vote on allowing them to use a certain road, and I did point out that I didn't think the town should be putting ourselves in that position right. to authorize them to drive on the state yeah. road. So you guys were going to just give them permission to drive on snow road. Okay. I'll, I'll find out. I'll, I'll check with the uh, state on that and find out what the story is. But you know, it would be nice if I can save beating up our roads. I'll try to save beating up our roads. And I obviously I did make a joke of it, but April first was our our date. Yeah. That is Friday. Okay. Um, and yeah. the frost is on the ground. You cool. might want to ask waste management because they own trash. If right. Exempt. They they know about it. Yeah. No, are they exempt? <coughs> oil yeah. No, I, I, and food trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm not calling up and yelling. I'm trying to get information yeah. here so that we can make reasonable decisions in the future. That's what it's about. Well, they, they, they're coming in empty, so yeah. they might have a waiver from, uh, from the state. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine they would. But yeah. And if, yeah. But they're also going to schedule the keep. So. Yeah, we can see what it is. Okay. Anything else? Just Peter. Mr. Strauss. Yeah, across the road. Uh, I have a question about far as the cost overruns that we had last year because of storm damage. Right. No, I attended your workshop meeting, and obviously that's not. I haven't heard anything about a plan that you're going to take those sections that we know that are problems, give those to the road contractor and say, make sure these dishes are good so we don't incur that large overrun that we had last year. Right. We know it was a new contractor last year, and things get delayed. Yeah. We're in spring now, so, you know, I'm just asking yeah. if the board has actually gone back and... and took that effort to get those roads, just the areas that we know on those roads that could cause us that large overrun. Right. Um, as far as the, <coughs> the one thing that we have done is, is it's, it's earmarking with, within the board. I mean, it wasn't set aside at town meeting or anything, but we have X amount of money to spend on essentially gravel roads or summer road contract. We've got uh, basically $40,000 in the course of the season of grading. So that leaves us with about thirty thousand dollars, and the plan is essentially is to set. We'll, we're going to either tonight or next week. We'll come up with an amount that we're basically setting aside not to be spent till closer to the end of the season, right? To try to uh, ensure that if we do have a weather event, it's going to eat up thirty percent of the budget. You know, of, of that remaining money is is it is set. That we just know that we don't want to spend that money until later in the year. But as far as looking at a particular section of road. We have been doing that. Looking at a particular section of the road is problematical. Let's make sure that the ditches are okay. We did do some of that last year, and one of the primary places that was, sort of brings up the most concern is on Culture Hill, and the the repair for that is so expensive. The, the reasonable way that we came up with it, dealing with it is you, you end up dealing with it every time you have a really good freshen. You're going to have, because there's ledge involved in it. In order to do something to the side of the road to prohibit that problem from happening in the future is a very expensive job. Right. But some of the smaller areas, we went over last year and they, they, they spotted up some Champion Hill Road, a couple other places like that that we went in and did ditch work. But it's one of the things that we're going to pay particular well, attention to. I know that we, we definitely had damage because of the ditches not being cleaned last year. It was mm -hmm. too late. It was late June before you even think, thought about yes. going into it. Yeah. And we already had the damage. Yeah. So, I mean, I, we already went 27K over on that road. Most of it was because of storm damage. Right. So we're not going to spend money to clean the ditches? No, no. We incur it afterwards? Is that what you're saying? No, no. What I'm trying to say is, is that when I look at the storm damage issue, there's two things that you have the storm damage, and it requires an ex expending money from the summer roads budget faster than anticipated. So what we're trying to do is just to make sure we don't run into that same problem. A lot of the reason we ran over budget last year was because we had a storm that cost us close to, what, 20? 23,000, yeah. Yeah. Now, granted, the reasons it happened could be deferred maintenance and everything else, but I don't want to find ourselves in that position again. There's no way we can afford to sort of earmark $20,000 to spend later in the year, but you're absolutely right, and it is one of the things that we have talked about and will talk about is, is that what money we are going to spend on preventative maintenance, what's the best place sections. to do it? Yeah, what section is the best to do it? So, you know, we will be looking at that. One of the things that's happening is we're going around and checking the roads, and I think dividing the roads up into three groups is working, going to work pretty well. All right, it's, you have a tendency to do it more often, and you, pay, and you don't forget things. And, um, you know, we're going to start building up a list of, you know, well, this section keeps showing up. You know, so what can we do about that? But um, I look at some deferred maintenance that was done on our ditching for the 
quite a while, for a number of years. It's going to, it's expensive to fix that up. I mean, we did, what, last year we did 250 feet on Champion Hill Road, and it cost us, you know, like $1,600. I mean, you know, it's we, very expensive. We have, we do have COVID that we need to change from on Philbrook Road, which we haven't talked about yet. Um, because that was one of the reasons the culvert wasn't big enough, so the water run over the over the culvert and went down the road, washed the road out. So that's that's something we gotta talk about and change the size of that culvert. Yeah. But maybe we can do that if we do the runouts on. Okay. Yeah, I, I so think to just, speak to your con to yeah, to but to speak to your concern, <coughs> Peter, we really do. I do anticipate that at the end of selectmen's meeting, at least twice a month, we're going to sit down and talk about roads a lot. So you know, we're look at what we spent and look about where it's being spent, and is there any way that we can diminish the annual cost of maintenance and stuff like that? We really are going to be looking at this very seriously. The serious. second point I had was, uh, as far as the calcium chloride, I know last year it was obviously late in the same reasons. Um, the contractor put down calcium chloride the day before five inches of rain was projected. Right. Uh, maybe something in the policy that he checks the weather forecast because we just wasted our money on that. Right. It, it blew the road, blew it right away. Okay. You know, I mean, it, just a suggestion yeah. you, know, you could look at that. I mean, he should be looking at the forecast before we put it down to save us the money. Yeah, well, that's that. one of the things we did talk about is, is getting the grading done s sooner than later so that we can get the calcium chloride done. Same thing, you don't want to grade your road right after you've done that. So we need to get through the first cycle of grading and then start, when we figure out when that can be done, is to look forward to the having the calcium chloride trucks come in. Thank you. Yeah. Something that uh, we may want to look at is put on calcium twice a year rather than once a year. Well, we, we did that for a while and then it, they say it builds up, but I live on a dirt road and it, I, very leery about bringing these things up because I live on a dirt road. I love hearing the fact that somebody in town thinks they should maybe do it twice a year. Well, with every the, third, every fourth year or something like that. When uh, the all state guy was in, he, he mentioned that you put half half the amount down the first time, and then the second time you put the other half down. Right. So we're not putting down any more calcium. We're just putting it down two two layers rather than all. So you see, it's a slower drip rate. As right. like, or, a well, fast, or a faster truck, one it, or the other. Right? It will last longer. <laughs> right. Yeah. If we, if we uh, yeah, I got you. spray it in yeah. April, then spray it again in the last of June. Well, that, that makes July. really sense. That makes a lot of sense to me. So that's something we should, we should look at. Yeah. No, I think that's a good idea. It won't cost us any more for the, uh, the to put a it little on. Bit, a little bit for labor, but yeah. But the material's going to be the same amount of material. Well, they, they just. They bring a truckload and put it on. They don't yeah. charge us for, for spraying right. it. Okay. They right. don't charge us for the material. Right. Yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Makes sense to you. It's something we should look at. Yeah. Okay. Is feasible enough. Um, you just kind of want to start that one conversation that's pretty important about the, the concept of looking at a double mm -hmm. application as opposed to single. Anything, play? No. no. Uh, motion? Uh, oh, wait. We got that in the back. But it just keeps coming. Um, May, please. Eric Jones, still in flame. Three questions. One, I don't know if this made this into your action folder or not, but the Historic District Commission had approached Lakes Region Planning Commission about doing maps of the historic districts. They can be done at no cost to the town, yep. but they will not proceed without a vote of the Board of Selectmen. Okay. And if you delay it another week, we won't be able to get the draft in time for our next meeting. All right, so would, which a, mo delays it a, month. would a motion to. Uh, uh, well, I'm not a member of the Board of Selectmen, so I No, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, asking, <laughs> no, I'm asking you is that what you're looking for is a motion tonight from the Board to, right. to yeah, accept the, free maps. Yeah, they'll basically what they're going to do for us, they already have all of our parcel information in their mapping software, and the descriptions are on the town website. Yeah. They can do a digital a version of a map for us for the historic district. But it costs the town no money. But it costs the town no money because so, they already have all the data. And what you need from us is a mention in the minutes that somebody yeah, made they the just motion. Need uh, I make a motion that we uh, uh, request that the historic district commission approach Lakes Region Planning about the provision of maps for their district. I'll yes. second that saying we got paid for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all those in favor? Uh, all right. All right. All right. Good. Yes. Okay. Two more. Yes, I have two more. Um, second, your plan schedule with the department heads. You now don't have meetings on the fourth Tuesday. Where does the fire department get moved to? 
Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think we should move, move Randy in with the uh, bit, uh, zoning officer. Same night? Well, she, she never comes in anyway, so... It, <laughs> <laughs> we can do that too. Right. I, I think I go to the road agent, he don't come in either. Yeah. Uh, well, well in, in the summer, hopefully they will. Um, the, uh, the one reason, because there is a representative from the fire department here at almost every meeting, So, but I do like the fact that there's a scheduled time period because if somebody else is looking at it and they have a question to ask the department through the selection, it gives them a chance. So, um, so I mean, we could double the bop, yeah. zoning officer. And, and yeah, and, and generally when we do speak with her, it's the end of the evening as opposed to the beginning of the evening. You're not opposed to the third week, but the fourth week, right? Well, no. Amy? Yeah, as much no. as we do now. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, uh, third. And then the third was, has, has the board decided yet who's going to serve as representative to which other town board? Uh, yes, we did. I will be uh, doing the Historic District Commission. Lenny will be doing, uh, 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 selecting SB will be on the planning board, and Lawrence will be doing work with the uh, budget committee. Thank you. All right, and in the way back is. Yeah, Linda Edwards, Providence Lake Road. Uh, I know the other year Randy blew out a lot of the culverts that were plugged or against. Right. Did we, did we finish that, or is that something we should look at again? Um, well, as we review the. I was going to say, we, as, as we check the road, we'll right. determine whether we need. Yeah, when we get an issue with a culvert and we go and look at it, I mean, we ask this of the chief in the sense that is that something that is a big inconvenience for the department to do on an ad hoc basis, or would it be better if we said we've got three culverts that need to be blown out? It's just a matter of efficiency as well. I think we should give them three applications. Yeah. And manpower. Well, manpower is basically the issue. Okay. All right. All right, but um, so in a sense, we'll just. Notify them when we got something that we need done. Right. As, we, yeah. as we check our road, we'll yeah. check the culverts. Right. See what. I mean, historically, I know since I moved to town, it's something that the department has done. I just don't, you know. If, if it, works, it, it works, it works. It works yeah. I don't know if the phone will work. <laughs> Only culverts. We can shave them. All right. Anything else? I have one other thing I'd like to. Yeah. I thought it was proper. You know the uh, building we have at the station, the lean to. Yes. The, would the selectmen have any objection to us, like, in closing it in, and we could use it as, like, a training building, like, for search and rescue or smoke, whatever? I got you. So you want to put a front wall on it? Yeah. Close it in. The two ends close it in. And, yeah. You know, put doors on it. Right. Fill it full of smoke and send somebody in with their mask on yeah. and stuff. It Jeez. wouldn't be smoke. It would be, like, Well, I understand. Fog. But, yeah. Um, I, I, I think I, I would much rather have somebody that had practice doing that than learn to do it the first time they had to do it. So I think it's a good idea. It's just sitting there. We close it. We could use it for trainings. And right. Could offer it to surrounding towns if they want to come down. That's a nice idea, too. It would be nice for uh, mutual aid. It would be mm -hmm. beneficial for them. Um, we put floor in it. Yeah. 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 Put, yeah. no, put floor in it. Any comment? <laughs> Lenny, any comment? No. It's just been sitting there empty. Yeah. Who, who, who's putting the bill for it? The town would. The town would. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll do the labor. You can buy the materials. Have you got a, have you got a price of the material? Nope, because we didn't want to get your opinion first. Yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed, but you know, cost is always an issue. But. Well, I guess I can't you? believe it costs that much. You know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna winterize it and get cable and. Well, <laughs> what, what we can do is we come up with a figure for material. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For the discussion. How about yeah. going to dump the material? <laughs> You're talking about just a lean to for training purposes, right? I'm sure if Mark was to keep his eye out, he could find some plywood, some two by fours. You know, is that a possibility? I, 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 yeah. It, it's a possibility. Let's be realistic. Let's we'll have it done in like five, hands. ten years. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll get let's it. just go to the Earnshaws and buy it. Yeah. <clears throat> let's get an yeah. estimate on, on well, the cost and we'll, yep. we'll see. Get the checkbook out. Okay, uh, anything else? Motion? Uh, okay, oh, uh, we're going to kind of slide off to the side. So it's sort of a recess because we want to go over I know the budget committee was meeting, but we want to go over some of the road stuff. So uh, we're going to go into work section. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, let's go.
But, uh, so everybody's aware of it. We did do this last week, but so you all know that when we go into a work session, we are going to discuss town business. People can sit in, but it's not an open forum. But we will not make a vote, we will not make a motion, and we will not expend money. I mean, that's not what it's about. Right. Um, some of the stuff that was on tonight's agenda was a result of the meeting we had last week. Just so everybody's aware of that. Work starting. He needs to come in on what is the first Monday or whatever, first Tuesday, whatever it is that we have set up there. So, yeah. Um, and then I'm assuming that most of what we had in here was uh, coal patching, one ton dump hourly rate with operator one. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the okay. Work. Yes. All right. Which he's been out. He was out today. Coal right. Coal patching too. So it, and he's it, it, still he still got more to do. Right. With the coal patching. So that's. Uh, but the with the three with hours, the uh, break was five and a half, uh, seven, eight. I mean, I don't think that the rake and the one ton sink price, but right? um, there isn't a price difference. I'll have to look. I'm just I'm adding something else. Same price. Oh, I thought I thought the one I thought the one he had a ten and a half. One time, and then he had. You know, maybe it was all the same. So that's twelve. If all of these one ton dump with an hourly light and operator, uh, that's thirteen and a half. Are pet coal patching? I'm looking at. I got fourteen and a half hours right now. So I don't think this was a coal patching job. I got six hours. Where is it? I know that part when he went over and he took some gravel and filled it over by uh, Arrowhead. Not it. Yeah, Arrowhead. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a, a water hole there. Right. And it, he he put uh, crushed gravel in that rather right. than trying to put But I mean, I've got a bill here for six hours. Yeah. A, a one ton dump in a single person. Okay. So what is so one person doing for six hours? So they must have been coal patching on. Right. All right. So now I'm looking at 19 hours of coal patching. Yeah. So, I mean, all the ones I'm asking, does yeah. that seem reasonable for the amount of stuff that he's done? I, I really don't know. Although th this might have been going to pick it up. Um, going down to uh, uh, Pike and picking up the asphalt. But well, six the, hours. The, 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 the white slips are there. That's yeah. what, he's, yeah. what he did, right? Yeah. Staple to the back. Sorry, right. folks, I hate to interrupt, but Maureen said you approved my hour today. Yes, training. yeah. So I redid the business cards. Okay, great. And then uh, just make sure it's changed. Pretty sure that I'll, I'll email Teresa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that wasn't you. Well, Maureen came back and told me, and I did the cards oh. just now. <laughs> yeah, I, they're just desktop computer thing. It's not a, it's not a printer thing. I mean, what I'm looking at right here, Lawrence, is, is that uh, if you look at the, it's 328, 319, we just spent $2,000 and we've got $30,000. I know. Right. I just see that on that in the year. It was almost right. almost three grand. Oh, it was over three grand. Right. What did I see? And one of the things I think we need to pick up on is when he says something, is we really start to need to start to look. I mean, um, you know, well, we somebody call, we says, call okay. him, right? When we call him when Well, we other than this York Rake stuff. Yeah, we had 76, we got 72, 6, so. Yeah, but 40 of that is grading right off the top. Used to be my just our standard grading schedule. No, no, I meant this is what he spent so far this year. Right. From 76 down to 72, 6. Right. Yeah. So, and, and it's one of the things I'm thinking of is at least twice a month, so we really need to pay. I mean, I think we should almost do it every every week for a while. Well, the th other thing is, is we need to get we need to get him in here and explain to him, we're going to go on look the road. Yeah. We'll tell you what yeah. needs to be done. Okay. And then we'll send him out. So do you want to try to get him to come in next week? Just. I it's, think so. it's, it's the first week, anyways. I think. Uh, he's second week, isn't he? Okay. Well, you, yeah, I think he's the second week. let's not wait. Let's ask him if he can come in. Yeah, I'm sure. Right. Who's, yeah. who's second? The first? Now, Lawrence, I don't want to keep piling stuff on you, but do you want to ask him if he can come? Oh Would no, you? that's fine. Because yeah. I, I mean, I'm happy enough to call. But. No, no. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll talk with him. Get him in here. But you know, of the money that we yeah, had to spend, we we just spent. Ten, you know, we just. We just spent like a huge percentage of the money that we have available. Well, the thing is, is in the springtime, you, you know, do you yeah. have catch up. The, the springtime is the most expensive part of yeah. the road maintenance. Yeah. 
the road grading and, and yeah. the ditching and that. Yeah. You know, the gravel yeah. gets put on there because right. you don't want to put gravel on. Yeah. After you put the calcium down. But the so. point that Pete Strauss was bringing up is, is to sit back there and spend some time and look at you know those. If if we do get to say fix a, a mile, I'm talking both sides, so half a mile or a mile of you know, road, really fix the ditches. Uh, because maintenance was deferred on those ditches for as long as we had evidence, and they just didn't do ditch work. Right. Um, unless there was a, a, a problem, but they didn't do any preventative stuff, and we have catch up. But when I'm looking at the price of what it cost to do that little section on Champion Hill Road last year, it killed 2,000 oh, yeah. bucks. Yeah. And you drove by it in 40 seconds. It, you were through the, yeah. That was it, it was done. Yeah. But that's two grand. And when we're talking about having 30, you can only do that 15 times, and that doesn't allow for anything else. So. We really need to pay attention to this. And you know, when somebody, when you go out and look at a situation, as we're, as we're evaluating roads, it comes up as, okay, so I know, I mean, I don't know at this point, but I look at a road and I say, okay, here's what's in here, here's what they're going to have to take out, this is going to cost us 3500 bucks. Is that something we need to do now? But, you know, and I, I don't have that kind of knowledge right now, other than two jobs, but the, they were part of bigger ones on Granite Road, and then a little bit on Champion Hill, and one other place he's done that I've looked at what a ditch, how much it costs us to do this kind of work. Little by little, I'm gaining the knowledge to go evaluate a site, but now I'm going to be able to go instead of saying, well, geez, it's 3000 instead of 5000 That's I want to be able to call at least that close. And so when a property owner comes up and says, well, you called up, you came up and looked, but you haven't done anything yet. You know, it's a four thousand dollar job. We're waiting until we have two or three of them because it saves us a little money to have them come out and do it all in one day. You know, I mean, whatever. Right, rather than run out for yeah. a couple of hours. Right. Um, the other thing is, is he he had to come up with a blower, and I think it will save us a lot of money for leaf mold stuff like that. Sticks. We're getting rid of the leaf. Yeah, I've heard about it. Going yeah. and yeah, bringing them in and trying to pick them up a load of them. Right. Them truck. This way. If it works, yeah, we just blow them off into the yeah bushes. Yeah, the one thing I did hear about him is is that if you got a lot of sand on top of it, that could cause a problem. So in in one sense, if one guy's telling me is you sometimes end up when you need a guy on the side with a long handled rake, just to kind of like turn these wet heavy sections over. It, once it gets underneath, it'll blow it, but it has a little problem sometimes getting down underneath the material that's trying to blow out. The the blow is out. Three point hit on my back. Yeah, tractor. yeah. As a, as a drive shaft driven. Yeah, and pretty powerful. Yeah, caught in the hand. Yeah, he said it was move six inch rock. So oh, cool. I guess yeah. it will move the dirt yeah. off the lid. Right. Yeah, if, yeah. If it will do that, I'm, I haven't seen it work. Right. right. Okay. I mean, a lot of them blowers. If you if your banking is pretty steep, you got a good sized banking. All that does is just blow it, and they just <laughs> come yeah. right back up over. Yeah. I mean, but I mean you do that with your little oh, no. hand leaf blower. If he gets. Seventy percent. Right. That's a lot. Right. You know, there's going to be areas along people's houses, and he can't do it anyway. He's going to do it where there's no houses. And right. Stuff. So he ain't going to be able to do the whole thing. Right. But, but he hasn't been able to us to come with a price structure on an hourly rate of running the equipment because he doesn't know what it's costing him yet. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But right. regardless, it's going to be a lot. It's cheaper than a backhoe. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Because the other way, you got to take the grid and bring them in, and you got to take a load and pick them up, and you got to have truck haul them off. So if we can just go through the tractor with a blower on it and get rid of it, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Yeah. You know. um, so that's, I don't know, we need we need to do some grading, but it's still a little early yeah. because they're saying snow for what, Monday? Yeah. So we, you know, oh, it's still hold it's, it off. It's April 1st. I, I mm. guess we haven't had any complaints. so. No, I mean, it's still April beginning. 1st, and normally, I mean, you're talking oh, yeah. the 20th of April before you get yeah. normally? From the 15th to 20th of April, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, a, it's been, a, just, it looks like a long spring, but yeah. just a snowless March has always been. Yeah. Uh, one thing when I look at these things is wonder whether or not it's a possibility to have a coating, a line that has coating in here, and so that when you see this, you know, you've got a coating for transportation of material, coating for, you know, delivery of material, yeah. I mean, to the town. Right. Um, so that when we look at these numbers, we can go, well, this was spent and this is what happened here. Well, this because is, you see an hour operating for a truck, you, I mean, it could be something he's doing in town, or it could be the fact that he went and got material and is bringing it back to town. But right. it's still a, an hour 
We'll just Doesn't truck that out there on the back? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's on the next page over, isn't it? This is just a... Well, I mean, I, when invoice, I look... The first yeah. page just invoices the second page that yeah. has what he's done in it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look over this a little bit more. I think the, the uh, uh, worksheet is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. I think, you know what I'd like to see here is an invoice to match this up to the invoice. Well, and that's the other thing, is <coughs> see, he goes to off the egg and get the material. Right. He doesn't get the bill for the material. The town gets the bill for right. the material. So it never shows up on a right. thing. So we don't know where we are with material mm -hmm. until we get the bill through the office. Okay. And the bill through the office, because don't... Don't okay, but the bill. one thing we do know is that a bill's been submitted. So that, <coughs> that's where we got caught in Granite Road last year, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the one way that you can stop that is is, is, is that uh, when we know that a bill has been submitted to... Uh, what, what, if he gave us something, he says, you're going to be getting a bill. Right. I, is I'm that what you... That we, that's what we need, so we didn't get caught like we did last year. Right. Right. So right. if he goes down to Osri... Osby Ag is just to leave a note here. Say so went to Osby Ag, you know, the bill might not come in for what nine days a week. I mean, yeah, they're pretty quick. Yeah, well, I can imagine so. Yeah, yeah so they, they, they so, but it, like you said, it, when you get near the end, that can well, look. what I'm saying is, when he submits his bill, yeah, we don't know what the materials are because right. he doesn't charge for the material. Right. He charges it to Osby Ag, okay. and Osby Ag bills the town for right. it. Right. Okay. We don't know what the material. All right, but doesn't he get a load slip or something? He Did gets he get a. He gets a staple to. Yes, and we can take the tonnage off of the low right. slips and apply them to that. Right. We could do that. Okay. Or we can have him do that. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of look at that's his job. Well, right. we, we can have him yeah. do that. Right. Actually, all you got to do is put the tonnage on. Yeah. Him. But we what do you think on, on this? Good time. Yeah. So yeah. And on this thing here is does, does, he, does he turn in the slips or does he keep the slips? He keeps one slip. In the, there's three slips, okay? On the, when you sign your, your slip at the Osby Ag, you get it's three copies. Yeah. So he he take, the truck driver gets one, and the office gets the other gets one, right. and they of course they have a yeah. packet of it. Yeah, I think just carrying right. over putting um, uh, the uh, invoice number in relation to here just to tie them together. Yeah, you got to just put the put the uh, put, he he has the slips. Right. He the tonnage that he put on each row. Right. Yeah. yeah, if he's and keeping the slips. Right, yeah. and then we'll know what the... Yeah, because we'll I mean, it did time. occur to me at one time is, is that we have the store... I mean, would it be maybe less expensive for the town if we just bit the bullet and had a bunch of material delivered to the salt shed and, and instead of driving down to the pit every time you need another load of material? Well, the trouble is with that is you need to have a loader there. And a loader there, there. right, so yeah, you, right. You know, get yeah. on that back and forth. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's, yeah, no. Yeah. And the other thing is, is it's all over the town, so he's not in, yeah. in that Sometimes area. Sometimes he's actually closer to yeah. Osby Ag than he is here. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think it, I don't think. Not no percentage in that. Okay. We gain anything there. Actually, we think we'd be losing money. Right. We're hauling it twice. Yeah. We're hauling it down there, dumping it, and we're going to turn around and pick it up again, hot, whatever, whatever right. road right. is going to go yeah. on. Yeah, sure enough. Yeah. So. Um, I think dividing the roads up, went, you're happy enough? Yeah, that worked out pretty well. It worked well for me once. I mean, you know, sit back there. I mean, some of the paved roads, I don't pay too much attention, but may, mo mostly I'm looking at shoulders and mud holes. The dirt well, roads. Well, the thing is, is, and I cleaned that catch basin out on Run Me Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Same as that. The weed, um, uh, yeah. pine needles. It's just that rather than one of us run over, you know, I said 60 miles, because you go in one road, you come back out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So with, you're traveling. Yeah. You, we don't have 60 miles of road, but you're traveling that many miles right. to, to cover yeah. all of them. Right? No, I think it's, it was a good idea. And, I'm glad uh, you came up with it. That way, one person ain't spending four hours. Right. He's only spending like an hour and a half. Yeah. Something, you know? and, and Lenny, I was telling Lawrence that I really appreciated the fact that when he had a road, somebody call him up, he'd call me. You know, the thing about whether or not to let that person have a oh, yeah. refrigerator delivered or... You know, when you called me about the culvert and stuff like that, that system, that, it's good. 
you know, is, is that if, I mean, there are emergency situations and you can't get through to the other person and you, sometimes you will have to make a decision, but if our habit is to always try to get in touch with at least one other selectman yeah. and run yeah. it by him and say, listen, here it is, it's like, you know, well, we were supposed to get that northeast of Sunday yeah. night that yeah. we never got, yeah. so. I'm happy enough not to have yeah, gotten it. But, I mean, somebody could have gone and looked at it before it got married yeah. and snow again. Yeah. But I think that worked out really well, and I do know that, you know, the communication that we've all had with each other on this concern, keep it up, because it, it's the right way to do things. You know, um, I, I'm happy with what's going on right now, so. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is I know we, <coughs> we talked about the crack seal and, and transfer, but I think each week we need to take on on something that we've, we've decided that we're going to do right. and, and, and do it so that uh, we're not looking, we're not out there in yeah. December trying to do something. Well, and, and, it done. and there were a couple of things that just public comment ran long tonight, but there, one of the things, as they said, is I have folders and every time it's like, you know, continue on Stevens Road and all this work we're starting to do now, copies of everything go in the folder, you know, and I can actually come in here on a Wednesday, make copies of what we put in there, right, so there's one that's in the file and there's one that's for us to look at, so that if you needed to take it home, you know, it's not like we're going to lose the master copy, but there'll be two copies of everything in two separate folders, so, you know, one copy in each folder here, and if you, you need to come down and look at something, great, but there's always that one that the staff knows always where it is and that there's nothing missing out of it. But what's important there is, is that one of the, I don't know if you read through the email stuff, to, did I send that to you all? The, yeah, I did it. Yeah, um, is, is that, you know, and I made a mistake tonight because there was something that you and I, I should have mentioned in the minutes that you and I had this conversation. Right. And we came to, and it should have got mentioned in the minutes, and that's the kind of thing that we really need to pay attention to, because I was telling Lawrence, there, there, there's some eagle eyes out there paying attention, oh, yeah. and and you know it's CYA stuff, but it's CYA because they found out that it does lead to better government, you know, you know, not people going off on their own and doing stuff because they think it's the right thing to do. So. But uh, we'll get them in, because I do know that the one thing we want to look at is what it might cost to fix that, because that's a little small thing we can do that should be done, is fix the rail on the culvert down here by yeah, Street. Yeah, I just, I just, yeah. You know, is that something we want to get Bob to do? Traditionally speaking, it's been the purview of whoever holds the contract to get those kinds of jobs. Right. You know, okay. As opposed to us doing it. I, I, Lawrence, I don't want to be the person putting it in, because if somebody, I mean, they could be drunk as a skunk and run into that and say, well, they didn't have the reflector in the right place. Well, who put it in? Well, the selectman put it in. I'm, I mean, it puts me at risk. And I got to say that, you know, it's like you say, cleaning out that culvert. There are things that I do for this town, but there's other things I won't. And when it involves road safety, I don't want anything to do with it. I want, well, I want to insulate the town by having somebody who's paid to do it responsibly. I look at it this way. You go down there and look what's there now. If we put up some kind of a railing, right. we'd be a hell of a lot further ahead than we are right yeah. now. No, I, I, it, it, it's not an easy for thing for me to say, Lawrence, but in all the years that I've been messing around with the town, I've come to the conclusion that it, you know, selectmen doing stuff is practical, it makes sense, and it's reasonable, but it's the wrong way to do business in a municipality. A municipality okay. needs to be able to afford itself. So do we want to have him... Give an idea what it would cost, yeah. Think that? Well, I, yeah, I mean that's the way I look at it. In the sense of, in the sense of not Is doing there requirements, state requirements, we have to meet. I'm sure there is. Got to be certain. It's just that height the, and length and the steel that's sticking up there now isn't going to be up to state specifications. Right. So no matter what we do, we're right. going to be substandard. Yeah. Okay. But at least we're going to be better than what we got there. Right. Well, in therein you run into the problem, as Lenny's point being, is if, if there is a state standard that if you're going to put a guardrail um, over a culvert, it has to be X by X. If that's a state standard, if we do anything, we have to do it to state standard, because the first time somebody sideswipes it and decides to take the town to court, they're going to go, the first thing the lawyer is going to say is this wasn't built to standard. It's just the way it goes. So in the sense of coming up there and doing something just to make it look better, uh, I'm not for that. It, you know, but if it means the difference between spending $1,500 and $6,000, you know, that's the problem because this stuff does. Well, the, the thing is, is the, the uh, steel that's coming up out of concrete now right. isn't 
state specifications. Right. Okay. It's the old. Yeah, the old style. The right. Old style. Yeah. So, do you cut that off and start over new? Right. New. Uh, right. What is it? Six-inch uh, galvanized I beam. Yeah. Or do you use what you have got? Utilize what you have and yeah. put put up a better. I mean, we'll put the rail in the right height. Right. And it'll be the right rail, and it would yeah. just be that the post on the are quite high the, enough. What we left to make, we left, we left to okay. the, uh, yeah, I beam up from them. Yeah, um, I don't know. You know, see, I mean, I know Bob's done stuff like that, um, but just check with DOT and find out what what they would want to see as far as replacing a railing. Uh, I was going to try to get in touch with Waste Man and come down here. And I can try calling the DOT and just see. Listen, I've got this thing with it. You know, it's an old bridge. What that's probably what. 45 years old, that culvert? Yeah, better. Yeah, yeah or better, right? Yeah, so 45 year old yeah. culvert and we want to replace the thing. I mean, how many hoops do I have to jump through? I can ask that question of ball face and if they say, you know, just make it blah, 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 I'll say, okay, I'll, I'll see what information I can get hey. on, on what the state wants to well, see. Well, called Bobby Libby. He should know the requirements and the railings. He, he'd have the height and all, all that. But yeah. the thing is, is the, the steel that's coming up out of the concrete down there now is like a four by four box. Yeah. And uh, the new railing is a I beam coming up. Right. You know, so whatever it's we do is going to be hole. substandard yeah. unless we well, I mean, take everything out and start over there. Yeah, and here's the point where I really fall back on the strength of the community. If, if Mr. Libby is, could come down there and give us a rough evaluation, understand that he bears no responsibility to it, but if he gives us a rough evaluation, I, I'd be happy to let him take a peek at it and give us a recommendation. You know? Is it, well, yeah, yeah, not me. Yeah. 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 Did, problem, give problem. him a call and ask, and just, you know, you know the one we're talking yeah. about, or you can look at it on the way home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm very happy to utilize, like, you know, I mean, information. Put, right put right railings up all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, he did say, too, that when we start really looking at Granite Road, when I was at town meeting, he buttonholed me, and so when we start seriously looking at Granite Road, he wouldn't mind, you know, putting his two cents in and bring his knowledge to the table, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to say no to that, so. Yeah. Anything else you want to bring up? All right, so you get in touch with Bob about coming to next Tuesday's meeting. I'm going to come in tomorrow and do the waste management stuff. Uh, I'll give DOT a call. I think waste management's probably exempt. Oh, I, I imagine so. I mean, hauling trash is a pretty important yeah. thing, you know. But um, I, I will have this thing. If you're exempt from the state, I would appreciate it if you would drive over state roads as much as possible because you're beating the hell out of a brand new road, you know. I, I don't think they did because the road was pretty well built and held up pretty well. But, uh, you know, if, if, if they can, yeah, it's all profit and loss to them, though. It's time and distance. Yeah, so if we're requesting that they go up to 25, I just I just added you know 20 minutes to their route in seven months. Yeah. So I can see them going screw you. Cool. All right. <clears throat> well, that covers the roads. I'd like to get I'd like to get going on the capital improvement plan. Just, just take a yeah. pick a day Actually, and we'll do a building. Yeah. One of the things, let me, when I come in tomorrow, I'll talk with Claudia, because when we were doing this thing for Gatsby, which is to get bonds and stuff like that, you had to do a town inventory, right? And so an inventory was done, and so there's some paperwork out there, and it'd be good to have that with us at the time, because we can put what we see with what we have on paper. And I, I tell you the truth, I don't really know how in-depth it is, but I'll check with her tomorrow and see what's available. Um, as a, I know we didn't have an engineer, a building engineer coming in and appraise the buildings, but some information was gathered. So well, I'll see what we have. Um, um, if, if we run into something where we're not qualified to evaluate, it, evaluate it, yeah. we can we can we can call somebody in. Yeah, and get it done. Right. But there is some work that has been but done. I'll get. I'll see what I've got for paperwork on the buildings now. We should be able to do like ninety percent of it. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's pretty easy to look at a storm window and go, "Well, that's not doing us any good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, or if, you know, if the roof needs to be shingled, yeah. we can tell the roof right. needs to be shingled yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 But I just think that we need to get to 
Uh, well, I, you know, I will say that over the, in the time that I've been selectman, I have been kind of like pushing here and there to sit back there and when I, we go out in front of the budget committee, to sit back there and say, you know, this is what the town needs. You're the budget committee. It's, uh, you know, this, I'm not saying that we need to get it. This is what we need, though. I'd like to put real numbers out there. And when we have these funds building up to replace equipment and all this kind of stuff, you know, the, you, you know that in six years you're going to need this much money. Well, it isn't necessarily a question of in six years having all the money in it, but in six years the bite, the extra bite isn't going to be that high. You know, so what you're trying to do is say get 70% of your replacement costs so you only have to raise 30 in one year. I mean, that's the kind of way that you play this stuff, but, uh, you know, that's, I don't think that's been happening in the past. You know, the, the selectmen have been submitting as budgets that are as low as they can make them. You know, I look at that's the budget committee's job to make it as low as they can make. I don't want to be unreasonable, but when you look, like you say, you do a capital improvements plan. Suppose we spend all this time when we come up with some pretty decent hard numbers. You know, this is how much we need to put aside. So you say, okay, you need to put one hundred six thousand dollars a year aside for you know building maintenance if you're going to do what you want to do, and then it goes through the budget committee and you come out with twenty eight thousand. So, or in this case, where I think we're getting forty thousand dollars that we had in. Uh, in the, in the budget for <coughs> municipal buildings, I mean, but that's up from last year because we were robbing other stuff to do that. Well, the other thing is, it's we're going to run it out for either five or ten years. Yeah. So it's not going to be an all one year. All one year. Yeah, we, right. We maybe only need to do yeah the roof this year. Yeah. Next year we yeah. we can do something else, so we won't be looking at right. Yeah, yeah. hundred thousand. And I do know that in all the years of work with municipal stuff, you know, you come up with plans like that. One of the things that's really, I think, important for a, a group of three, because the most you can, I mean, other than illness, the most you can lose is one in a year, right? Of, of people that have been in office for a while, is you get these plans, and then you know you're in favor of it, and you're you're the one that's really doing it, and then you know, or I am, and I don't get elected, or I don't run, or something like that, and the whole plan goes out the door with the person. So it's trying to institute it in the behavior of the board in the way the, the uh, agenda is written up, stuff like that. So you develop these habits of behavior that just refer to the plan and then update the plan. And, right. you know, I mean, but trying to get that to carry over into another group of selectmen is difficult. It's really, well, if, really difficult. If, if you have a capital improvement plan that's good for five years, and then even though you get a new person on the board, but they just don't look. They still have that plan. Yeah, yeah but no one's looking at it. Well, <laughs> and, and that's what I'm saying is you need to develop Two that. of them ought to be looking right. at yeah. it. Well, and so that's the habit you need, you need to show to that third one to look right. at it. Yeah, and so these systems, that, like the, the phone calls we were making on telephone, I mean, on the roads and stuff like that, that's very, very important, and, and, and it's a behavior of a, the, the group working together. So I'm, I'm really happy with what's going on right now, just so you both know it. Like this road plan that you sent me. Yeah. And yet, what, we, what year are we in? Well, we're not, because yeah, the so thing is, is we've never, we've never applied the money to it. You know, I mean, granted, I mean, everybody knows the reason that the money's off on it, but we've never taken, because we spend on average $300,000 a year on our roads. That's what it boils down to, roughly, you know, plus or minus $20,000. But $300,000 a year, and we've always just sort of done one big project. Right? And, you know, we, we've got School Street and Jones Road. That both of them are going to fall apart the same year. Well, <laughs> the thing is, is, when we do a a road, we need to do a section of that road that we can afford, right. not say we, we want to do two miles yeah. of the mountain. Right. We can't afford two miles. No. Let's do what we can aff yeah. afford to do, and right. that's what we want to work yeah. on, it's just that section. Yeah. Well, that little thing that happened, and I understand why it happened when we did these little small things, I mean, but that, that, that part of the logic that I put forward at meetings is when people ask us, why did you do what you did, is, is that I really do think about this town, and it's got a future. And there are certain things, if you take smaller jobs, right, you can do a slightly better job on a smaller section of road. You know, when you've got this section of Green Mountain Road that we really, you know, it's got some wetland in it, and, you know, it's going to require serious earthwork. And I, when I look at something like that, I'd rather bite the bullet and do less, a whole less paving and get that section of road fixed so that the next time you have to pave it, the earthwork is pretty much done. You know, but that... But that's, that's a hard thing to carry across because it's not not doesn't benefit me really. It benefits the next generation of people that have to deal with that road, though. Yeah, but that like you take that section from Highfield to yeah Iowa. we can't afford to do that no. section all in one year. No, but we, we could do from there to Range. Yeah, and do it right. Do a yeah. yeah. I mean, you spend yeah. yeah you spend twenty yeah. percent more on the earthwork 
and 30%, 40% less on paving, you know. But I look at most of the places that we have, we have some, you know, I looked at um, Drake Road today. The roadbed must be pretty good because it doesn't frost eave up a lot. I mean, it does in places, but it's not that badly beat up with frost eaves, but the, the road surface is, in three years, it's going to start coming up by the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, that's pretty rough. You go on that in the truck and it's pretty rough and all the time. Yeah. Well, I, I, I understand, but... I mean, I looked at that as one of those roads that you might be able to get away with a chip seal on that for, you know, until we can afford to come back in and put the other stuff. But, you know, we found out to our chagrin that chip seal costs chip about the I same as anything else. It's yeah. more expensive than payment. Yeah. And I, I don't think the chip seal amount to anything. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, I bet. I just wouldn't see just the same. Oh, I used to work when the, the when the traffic, you had 1950 and 60 traffic on your roads, it worked okay. But, yeah. I mean, we're running, how many cars do you think run over Townhouse Road now as opposed to 15, 20 years ago? You know, it's probably by 30% more traffic. Three, at least three more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at least three more, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. the, the state done 25 with Gypsy. Yeah. And they, they say they're not going to do that anymore right. because yeah. it, it it wears the cutting edges fast, well, yeah. and, it, and it makes it makes them they plow a lot harder right. because there's so much drag on yeah. that. Yeah, so I remember you said that that the guy was like, yeah, you never want to flop just, a bike on it either. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's no slide on that one. No. <laughs> so is there anything else you wanted to bring up particular? Um, so this road here, and not this a uh, concrete road? I that's what I was going to say. I think it's concrete underneath that. Really? Yeah. I do. When did they do yeah. that? Well, because it must well, have been. Well, it was before my time. Yeah, yeah, when I was going to school up here, yeah, I cause swear it was a concrete road. Really? That was back in, what, 50s? Well, was that one section on the road to Cornish? I don't know if it was ever concrete, but it sure yeah. felt yeah, like it was, concrete. Right. <laughs> it was all concrete. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even yeah. Ironworks yeah. Road, I right. think it was all concrete. Really? Huh. Old 25. Well, that's nice because then it probably costs us more to chew it up if there's concrete underneath it. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't think it was out by Abbott's, though. It must have changed. I think it changed by Levitt Bay, I think. I don't know, but I do. I think this road right out here is, is concrete. Yeah, that's what I Well, do. it's a good thing to know because if we ever have somebody give us an estimate, we need to tell them. I said, you better do a little yeah. core sample on that because it could be concrete underneath yeah. there because that's going to skew your costs and get rid of what's there. And also, I don't know, with concrete, it might be worth it just to pave over it. I, mean, I don't know if it gives a good substrate. Well, you get, it gives you good base usually. We always get the expansion. Right. If I didn't have to dig up it before I paved it, I'd be willing to put up with a couple of thumps. <laughs> well, I don't they, know. They repaved uh, 25 down through Connors, and, and you, don't, you don't get them now. The paving, the pavement is cracked a lot, but uh, you don't get that thump thump down through. Well, they only did a year ago, so. Yeah. Give it time. Give it time. Yeah. Well, I don't, you know, it's just the expansion joints they used to have to put in. Yeah. Right, that's what it was. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Anything else? Um, and Lenny, I'm serious, if, if there's anything you just want to chat about or a question you have, bring it up. But no. You're happy enough? Okay. Other than, I don't know, was it worth calling Evan just trying to get him back to calm my neighbor down, or should I just go into it? Okay. What what, what happened there? Well, he, when he come sanding the other day, he come off from the hill road and helling around. I don't know if he'd probably empty. Uh, yeah. And next thing you know, the truck's crossways in 153. He's headed right toward the schoolhouse. And he slid down, and when he slid down, he get into the ditch, and of course the spinner, or the... Yeah. On the salt. Yeah. Uh, Body there, got into the bank and on my neighbor's lawn there and dug right. it up. And then, of course, he tried to get out and he mm -hmm. was spinning in the dirt. So, we, so we had he damaged, sanded. We he had sanded. damage to somebody's road because of the vehicle. Well, it's there. basically just the, the ditch and, you know, and then it's her lawn up to where a fence is. Right. And, uh, yeah. She didn't think I should fix it. And I said, well, you know, I don't mind because I'll be over there raking it. But right. But then I think, well, geez, you know, the amount of money we paid him, 
Yeah, well, no, my question. He could I don't know who was driving the truck. Ron might not even know what happened. I mean, oh, I'm he sure he didn't. Right. But he was right. It's one he didn't get hit. I'll give him a call. I'll, I'll ask him. So it happened right near Rumney Road. It's on the school. Yeah, outside. you see the tracks. Right okay, here. I'll swing down and look at. No, it. No, the, right, right across from the school. Yeah, because he may not know about it, and I'll just ask and say, "Listen, I got this. Too. Is there anything? You know, do you feel like responsibility for, you know, repairing the damage? I mean, you can over it with, you know, shovel and rake. Yeah. Make it look a lot better. But. Yeah, and, and to tell you the truth, Lenny, that's the kind of thing like I don't mind. That's the kind of thing I and don't want. The other place is right at the church. You must come out there with his flowers. Yeah, stuck it into the yeah. bank there. And that's that's all. That's all done, the yeah. church. Yeah. Do you see that when you come out of town off Road right straight across the street? No, I have to look. Yeah. He must come out there with his blade, blade and stuck it. Right well, you know, I mean, it, I will say that in the past I've had uh, enough complaints to make me. Considered it as true. He said people complain that his trucks drive too fast. When I talk to him, he says, I tell my guys this is the speed. But he's not in the truck all the time. Yeah. You know, so I don't mind saying, listen, I got these two issues. And does the person that saw that think that was a speed issue, or is it just they don't really know? I don't really know, but you know, the Scott Salmon come up through and with that semi. Yeah. Okay. You get that slowed down through then. Well, no, I'll check with him on that and um, see what he has to say. Okay. Anything else? The only thing I got is I'd like to see us work on what we got here yeah. and get everything done by the end of June. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's feasible. Yeah. And Can we go quicker on the bridge, Stevens Road? Well, we got to wait for the permit to come back. Yeah, but I mean, mm -hmm. oh well. It, did you get a copy of the? Uh, yes, they said the uh, RF seventy-five days, right? Yeah. Did you get a copy of the proposed yeah, yeah. RFP for the Stevens Road? Have you gotten a copy of that yet? No, I was. Remember, Timmy got from somebody else, um, but it's basically an RFP for Stevens Road. It says you oh. know what they expect, you know yeah, what we expect, and all that. It's no. It's, it's no good. It's, but we need, what is it, we, need we can use it to develop. We can use well, uh, the one he had was, for, I forgot what town to call it, Stoddard or somewhere, and it was 16 foot wide. Right. I forgot the weight limit. Yeah, but I mean, but it gives us a guideline on what we need to set up for the RFP, because I'm very happy to, next week to s spend some time working on the RFP, because, I mean, we know we're going to get that permit, because we don't have to have it to craft the RFP that we're going to put out. Yeah, so when we get it, yeah. we get it. We'll All right, so why don't, we, why don't we figure next week at the end of the meeting... Um, we can get that that one squared away, yeah. and then we can start working so on you, the Grand Road. I mean, I think we're ready enough right now to sit back there and craft something that we could run by an engineer. So did we well, cross all our T's and dot all our I's on this one? Um, but we could do that next week at the end after the meeting. The other thing I was thinking is I've gotten four prices on the precast, and Mitchie's the cheapest one. Right. I'd like to see the town... Buy the precast from Mitchie, right? And then we put the installation out for bid, right? Not put the precast out for bid, just the installation, out. right? Yeah, and, and I, it strikes me that that makes sense, but that's a decision we'll make when we actually get the public sitting in front right. of us. But I think that's it's not, it, what I'm hearing. The stuff that you're putting on the table, the, incrementally they save us some money. Well, if, right. if but there is a lot of concern about this sort of. Doing this incrementally, uh, I'm not. I don't necessarily agree with that concern. I think that we we have enough smarts between us that we could figure out how to well, do. Well, the thing is, anything over fifteen thousand we're supposed to put up a bit. Right. But we've gotten four prices on precast culverts. Right. And we didn't put it out for bid to get the four. We just right. got four prices. And Mitchie is the cheapest one. Yeah. So if we put it, the whole thing out for bid. They're just going to add to what? Because they make a profit on it. They're going to make yeah, a they, profit they invest on their that. money in it. They right. want to make some money on it. Yeah, yeah. So I think the town would be better off. It would be cheaper for the town if we purchased the culvert from Mitchie, right? And then put just the insulation of it out for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, Lawrence, I think w w let's craft all that next week at the end of the meeting. Because as I said, I'm. I, I like what you're saying, but it really needs to be said when there's people oh, yeah. sitting in front of us. So next week at the end of the meeting, we'll just announce to people is, is that we're going to spend considerable time working on the RFP and, and the logic behind how we're I'll going to get, deal with Stevens Road. I'll get a couple more prices. Yeah. So that, you know, we know that he is the, yeah. I won't say he's going to be the lowest, but he's going to be. Right. The thing is, is Mitchie has done them with Ossipy. Mm -hmm. Ossipy had it. 
you know, really likes. Oh, I look up on the web. I found nothing. And but they, no bad news. They, they work with you. Yeah. And where the others, uh, Mitchie comes up with a set of plans for it. I don't know if the others will or not. Right. Yeah. And they come out. So the precast and, and the wing walls, those are different. Or the, it's two different items. That you're, or do we look at it as all one thing? I'd say all one okay. thing. Okay, yeah. all right. Because it's all connected. Right. Yeah, yeah. okay. The culvert and wing walls. And yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I don't see any reason why um, by the third meeting in April we can't have an RFP craft. We may not have the thing back to put it out yet because, you know, if it stipulates in the RFP, we can have a, an accepted form. For well, yes, we need uh, the accepted form. Bacon said that he'd, he'd help us write that RFP, yeah, yeah. but he wanted to wait until we get the permit yeah. so he knew what we were talking about. Yeah. And okay. everything's going to be referenced to that plan anyway. Okay, all right. And then one thing we could do next week then is just sit back and brainstorm over those things we want to make sure are in the RFP. Because you know, right. it's, in one sense, I'm pretty sure if an engineer is helping us, he's not going to miss anything. But it teaches us a little bit about if we ever have to do this again, here's the things you need to consider. I would much rather find out that we thought about all our own as opposed to just learning it from somebody else. Right. You know, but then be verified by somebody that actually has putting their license on the line, so to speak. So that's something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. We done it with the... We keep them at your house till we need them. Yep. Yeah. We, uh, we done it with the salt shed. Yeah. We bought the building. We put the installation out for it. The building, yeah. That way, we got the building a lot cheaper than we would have if we put those... Well, you're not paying 20% to that. somebody else for mm -hmm. investing their money in it. Yeah. I mean, that just... Yeah. Well, I, I, don't, I don't have a fault with a business making a profit, but if we if we can take some of that ourselves... And, right. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, I mean, they're probably still making a profit, just us buying it from them. Well, yeah, the company is, yes. Yeah. But I meant, if if we put the whole thing out the bid, the, the, the engineering firm, is going to make money He's going to tack 12% yeah. on yeah. it, yeah. or whatever. He's going to make money on yeah. that, too. So well, that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but we don't have to let them do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, yeah. we, if we buy it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's like if you were doing this on your own property, would you Not pay somebody that, else to deliver? If we use Mickey, we already got his prices, right. and we already got his yeah. anything and he's going to do, yeah. which will help us when we write yeah. the and, RFP. And because you use that, the business name a lot, and I'm under the impression the reason you do is because he is the least, that company is the least expensive. That's why he keeps, why the, right. I don't want to call him he, but that's why the company keeps coming up is everything we've seen. They right. deliver an acceptable product for the least amount of money. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we can do that next week. We'll just get run through what craft and an RFP and consider all the stuff that we want to consider. Because I, I I do think that the town itself would be happier to see us have an engineer verify that this is the RFP that you need. So if we craft something, put it together, say we want these points covered, and anything else you think about. Yeah. You know, we can. We, even with him doing that, helping us do that, we can always take it away now and yeah. we'll look it over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah, because I do think the prices that you were coming up with before the, the town, the vote, and everything, I think they were. I think we can do it for the prices you were talking about under a hundred. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think so, and that that'd be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put one other thing on the table. It says <coughs> to do with the granite. When we look at, it, is there any reason the granite road has to be a two-lane bridge? Well, they've been for how many years? It isn't now. 1920, they've been one. Okay, all right. So, yes, if we was going to go with state, state money. Yeah. State money, yeah. It would have to be. It would be a two-lane bridge. Right, okay. But if we're doing it ourselves, yeah. we're just repairing what we have there. Yeah, because all I want to do is, is, is if a fire, if our fire truck can get across it, it's wide enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think no. it's 18, 18 and a half feet. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, other than that, I just th there's no particular reason that that has to be the same width as the rest of the road. No. Yeah. yeah. But it's, you know, narrow bridge ahead. So well, it's, once you get across the bridge, it ain't too late. Right. Yeah. Know, so right. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah, because I figured uh, we should have our understand what we're going to be doing with Granite Road Bridge. I'm, I'm thinking by the 1st of August, we should have that pretty well knocked out. I mean, what we're going to do. We may still have stuff to do, but we should pretty much know what we're going to do by August. I mean, that's the latest that I can see letting Granite Road before we have a decision on Granite Road. Because there has yeah. been discussion in meetings of why do it. 
you know, and then when you look at our road budget and you look at some of the roads that need work, I mean, every, I do mean this, everything we spend on Granite Road, we're not spending on the other roads in town. Yeah. So it's a question of, uh, like I said, I'm loath to lose infrastructure that exists in town. I don't want to see Effingham's well, infrastructure diminish. The other way to look at that is, is the money that we're spending on the bridge yeah. is only coming out of the bridge fund. We're not spending town money. Well, I mean, it's town money. Yeah, but it, it is, is town money. But, for but, that but that's money we've been, it's still coming out of the taxpayer's pocket. Right. We've been appropriating that money for roads, and we won't be able to do that if we suck up all that money on the bridge. Because, yes, we get paid back, but there's a lag time in between when we had to raise the money and when we get paid back. Well, yes, yeah. we're going to stay paid. Right. But if we do it on our own, yeah. we can just take the money out of this. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and we can, and if I get, whenever I get to HEB, because they did offer to come down and talk with us, I'll call them on the offer and say, listen, yeah, we'd like to, let's make a schedule on this and have them come down and we can really look at these situations then, you know, see what it's like. I had a, I had a uh, thing on way of putting concrete in the bottom of the uh, Yeah, velvet. right, for the snow road. Yeah, maybe that's something we, we can look yeah. at. Well, and, but, and they can discuss that because they're familiar with that bridge too. They can discuss a little bit with that. So I think having them now is pretty important because I mean, it also, I mean, I did hear stuff and it was a while back and a lot of other stuff with water under the bridge since then, but you never heard the discussion in the first place. So it'd be really good for you to hear it. I brought it in. I was going to give you a I mean, cup. You know, I know people send them in about fixing that bridge, but I mean, you got to look at the people because they say, I don't use it. Right. You know. You know, fix my road. Yeah. I don't use that bridge, but there's a lot of people that do use that oh, bridge. And, yeah, you know, and all the people that live on there, they'll be, they'll yeah. be coming for abatements because they, they live on a dead end road. Yeah, now. no, no. I, 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 like know. I said, I'm really loath to, I, I don't want to see our yeah. infrastructure diminish. Because, I mean, once it's closed, you never get it. Yeah. You're yeah. Gonna, yeah. yeah. It stays closed too long, it'll never reopen. Yeah. Okay. Here's an eco span, which they come in at 88,000. Right. Yeah. So that's why I say I think Mitchie's got a good price. Yeah. And he, even this uh, um, American concrete, mm -hmm. there was more money than Mitchie. Yeah. You know, and that's a big outfit. No, I, I think Mitchie's going for market share. I mean, they're taking, I think they're making a little less to try to get more business. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. It strikes me. It, it's our benefit. That's what they're doing. All right, cool. Uh, motion so. to adjourn. Or make one. Okay. You can make one now, second. second. All in favor, right. <laughs>